Welcome to the Bar and the Stars. I'm Nick Gregorio, and those crazy bastards did it. They did it. They're releasing the Snyder Cut. But before we wade through this mess, I got to throw it to our resident bar back, Ricky Hayberg, with some housekeeping to do. Ricky, take it away, brother. Uh, first off, uh, uh, well, okay, first off, let's start with what everyone's drinking tonight. Uh, Nick, why don't, you, why don't you lead us off of what you're having to drink? Oh, this is the original drink from the very first base bar. It's green uh, food coloring in a uh, vodka or tequila drink. It's called the Kryptonite Crusher. All right, Elliot, how about you? Uh, I'm not drinking Windex. I'm just drinking uh, <laughs> a, a tasty beer. Oh, good. A, uh, it's a Sierra Nevada Bitburger collab. It's a hoppy Pilsner. It's quite good. And Phil. I'm going with a, a Racer 5 here, uh, which I, I'm doing proper in a, in a frosty mug. Mm -hmm. And I just want every all you uh, you three pieces of garbage and everybody watching, uh, this is my first beer in over a month. First booze. So I'm oh, coming off what? the wagon specifically for y'all. How is that even possible? Look at that pool. What have you been doing with your time? I, does that mean the last it, time it you drank been. was with us on stream? Um, pr Shortly after. Shortly after that th that day, yeah, but uh, but here we are. So I'll wait for you and wow. then we'll do a nice right. little cheers. I'm having a uh, Boomtown Mike Check Mike Check Pilsner. Uh, I've been I've switched to lighter beers for the summertime. Mm. Don't want to have a nap in the middle of the day. Want to try to enjoy all the time I have on this earth. So I'm gonna also pour mine in uh, one of my favorite glasses because it's shaped like a can, but it's a glass. Nice. Ooh, delicious. Uh, All Ricky, right. I can't see you. Yeah, I know. You oh, can, okay. If you open up the uh, if you open up the stream, you can see me. I can't run my camera on two apps at one time. Got it. So here we go. Uh, cheers to the first episode of Space Bar in what? Two years? Three years? <sighs> it's been a Something long like time. That. We shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step to. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, I will never not drink this again. It's very oh, good. Hell, right. oh, water. <laughs> I sent my my wife just took the kids to McDonald's. Oh. to get them a little uh, quick meal and a happy meal toy so uh that's how that's how you keep them under control i hope they're right, getting guys. apples instead of uh instead of uh fries of and, course it and comes with apples and fries a doy nick what's that the theme the right now what's <laughs> what's the toy right now trolls world tour so that's pretty i mean in my house that's okay. uh all that's right like gold now the housekeeping that not just what we were drinking was the housekeeping uh first off if for some reason you haven't seen the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News, it is not your fault this time. You are not to blame. YouTube put us in timeout. They age-restricted the video, so they took it away from sub boxes, uh, sub feeds, and uh, uh, searchability. Yeah, we are uh, the victims of censorship. Yeah. Censorship. A conspiracy of censorship. Yes. 500 so, feet from school, 500 feet from a YouTube post. Jeez. So <laughs> if, you, uh, if you haven't seen it, Please go watch it. You have to actually go to our channel or use the links that we post on Twitter uh, to, to watch it. And if you have seen it, watch it four or five more times. I mean, what's the damage? What's, what's it going to hurt if you leave it playing the whole time, right? Uh, so go rewatch it a bunch of times. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you do go watch it because, uh, yeah, uh, we've been put in timeout for the second time in two months, no less. Uh, I think yeah. the age restriction is extra harsh because then you got to sign in, yeah. which is a real bummer. Yeah, make sure you're signed in. Sean Fox, who's been uploading our back catalog, uh, just sent $7.77. Oh, thank you, Sean. Oh, Shout cheers. out from the ETC archive. People are hitting me up asking me to find old Space Bar episodes because of this stream. Keep up the good work. Uh, yeah, those are lost. Nick said sure. they're on Amazon. Wait, really? The, the corpse. The corpse of the first season, the old, uh, the one back in the... Uh, Oh, the oh, like OG, did. like Andy Reesmeyer, uh, oh, Sony okay, PlayStation okay. View version. You that's guys not, were on those too. That that's was, not I mean, the real Space Bar. The yeah. real Space oh, Bar no. was like Space Bar Mark II, where, yes. uh, yeah, when, they're somewhere. There's enough, there's a few of them in enough places. Well, well, that would make that's, that's how I, I impress people. When I go to restaurants, I don't slip the Mater D at 20. I go, hey, you know, I have a sketch comedy show with Nick Gregorio. If you search on Amazon, you can look at the thumbnails yeah. and then it'll say currently unavailable in your region. And that's all regions. Yeah. Hey, Dan Mills. I, I remember. It. Oh, Dan Mills. Here. Uh, Phil, nice. what I love, I, I kind of compare our run to casino. Like we had like the mob once ran Vegas and then they blew, blew it up and now corporations run it. And that's why you can only see glimpses of it here and there. Like mm -hmm. we once yeah. ran 
a big a big wing it. of yeah we had it and they uh, uh, now there's all. just a little plaque with your name on it at the flamingo yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nick once sat, sat here uh anyways to uh to chris brown to, jesus christ chris Whoa. brown with a hundred dollars i was going to say uh it, it, as a way to uh make up for youtube punishing us nonstop. We're going to make this stream a membership drive. So why don't you go ahead and do what Aiden Campbell and uh, 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 Dan Mills did and become a member today to contribute to your favorite channel on YouTube. That's us. Become a member. You get some emotes. We actually, they highlight comments now on regular videos so we can see those. But also, uh, shout out to Jackie Dang for $2. Riley Mech for 5 And, uh, of course, a huge shout out to Christopher Brown. Who Chris basically uh, just just paid for those missing views on the on the last video? Thank you very much, Christopher Brown. Cheers Here. to you, uh, yeah. Dominic Tooney. Thank, thank you as well. Uh, again, if you want to become a member, hit the join button down there. We would really really appreciate it. Uh, now I hand the reins over to the show's host, one of the most hated men on the internet. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, Nick Gregorio. Oh my God, we're about to break some eggs, cause all right. Throw it off to the end of the bar, our resident bar fly, Phil Arrigo. Thank you for joining me, partner. It's good to be back. Good to be time. back. Good to be back virtually. Yes, yes. Um, so, what do you think? Are you? I'm going to start with Phil. We're going to work around. Are you happy? Are you excited for the Snyder Cut? Okay. Uh, I put file me under. I went down the Plinko board, and I wasn't sure, like the whole range of emotions, and I wasn't sure I was going to land, and I eventually landed on morbid curiosity okay because i feel like any parts of the movie that i've all that were included in the original we've already seen right so you'll be yeah. like come on like get through this like i know it's gonna be very hard to watch this in a true absorbing a film or movie or you know whatever so i'm it's gonna be a little bit of uh getting my sleuth glass out to be like that's new that's new they fixed the mustache and that that's that's skinny fleck that's fat fleck and, and all that stuff so, so if I, we from what I'm hearing, there should be no mustache and there should be no skinny. Oh, that's correct. Correct. It's correct. just all from the original source. All right, Ricky, man of the hour, man in the middle seat. Usually, what do you think, buddy? I know you hate when I call you that. So, uh, uh, I think it would be a big flex if they put the mustache in. Oh, okay. I think yeah. that would be a huge flex. <laughs> like if they if the reshoots involved explaining the mustache, release I think that the mustache would be, cut. Yeah, the mustache cut, it would make a lot of sense and it would be different enough and it would look great and I think people would like it. Uh, and, you know, Superman's been through a lot. But uh, overall, like, I, as much of a dumb idea as it is, I think I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it just to, you know, to get it over with, I guess. It's like going to the DMV, you're like, oh, geez. Uh, well, my day's going to be a lot better once this is done. Uh, uh, Rick, uh, Ricky's excited to go to the DMV. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm excited to be getting it over with. Uh, I mean, I am fascinated. I have a lot of some some conflicting thoughts on it, but uh, I look. I'm 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 gonna subscribe to HBO uh, Max or whatever it's called. I'll, I, anyway, regardless of this, and when this drops, whenever that might be, I think it might take a little longer than they're saying. But whenever that happens. I'll definitely uh, give it a watch for at least, you know, 45 minutes to see, well, <laughs> see out of just like morbid curiosity. Okay. Um, so you're, you're in the, you, you, you plinko to right where Phil landed. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited for this. The Snyder movies have, have grown on me with time. I appreciate the universe he was trying to build. I think there's a few things that went against like the success of these movies, at least in people's minds. One he wasn't giving us a Marvel equivalent of the DC universe, but that was never made clear. Like everyone thought we were going to get these kind of PG, PG 13 ish versions of the characters, you know, just basically adapting the source material, which there is something to be said about that, but he really tried to place these characters in the modern world. If Superman grew up in the eighties, like in a cold world, America, like America's a little bit dirtier there, not compared to like, you know, the 70s Christopher Reeve Superman was sort of fetishi fetishizing that old bygone era of like the, the 30s and 40s, that kind of wholesome G whiz approach. Like, I, I think you can't retread that ground or if you can, you have to do it very carefully. So, you know, in a lot of ways, he was trying to give us what if you took these characters that are godlike and put them in a modern context and that already skewed darker. So you had people be like, dark and gritty, dark and gritty. Remember, that was the big, that was the whole thing about it. But 
the guy's a filmmaker. He was trying to tell a story. I think he had a vision for a more like a multi-picture vision. And this was approved by his bosses, not just approved, like championed, right? Like they, they were making a big deal about this. So I'm, I'm happy in the sense that a creator who was promised something in this town where promises are, are, are quickly, you know, taken away from you is given a chance to at least release his finale or a version of his finale of his trilogy. Yeah, but so, so this is this is where I want to throw a flag on the play because when he was like a cut of my movie exists and it's that's the cut and then there was trickles Momoa said it and then Gal said it and Affleck and stuff and I'm sorry if a cut of your movie exists you don't need the studio to spend twenty to thirty million dollars to shit oh. it out to like and digest uh, that it. that number apparently uh, completely like that that's not a real number. One of the one of the main uh, AT and T guys was just like, yeah, I don't know where that thirty million number came from. It's going to cost like two to three times as much as that. It's yeah. going to be a huge undertaking. That, so that's to, to Phil's point. Okay, two two things. Uh, going back to what Nick said, uh, I remember very vividly when after Man of Steel, when they were trying to do some kind of Marvel esque thing, being like. Oh well, it's DC and it's Zack Snyder, so it's not going to be that. It's going to be more geared towards adults. And the fact that uh, before the first trailer of Don of, John of Justice came out, everyone assumed that it was going to be more of a direct adaptation of the Frank Miller story. I don't. I don't think anyone assumed that it was going to go more of a straight Marvel style. But also to Phil's point, uh, he's right. There, if there was a cut, it wasn't what anyone thinks of when they think of a director's cut of a movie he has a vision that was never fulfilled and See, so uh, his it'll be his cut when he's done making the movie he wants it's to like make. a george lucas uh director's cut well I'm, I'm gonna say this is this is what i think the cut was because i think a cut exists i think it was missing vfx or unfinished vfx but i i do not think that a director a seasoned director like Zack snyder screened a, a very rough cut to executives. I don't, I don't think that was the case. Mm -hmm. What I do think is happening right now is that he's given an opportunity to open this bad boy up years later with a lot more perspective on the characters and perspective on what the fans want. And like that's cheating. It is, it is. I mean, <laughs> it is yeah. But I think, I think that's like, okay, imagine that. Imagine if like Machinima popped up tomorrow, Warner Brothers like, yo dudes, you can do your show again. Or you're like, great. We already got all our equipment. No, you would go and like retool it so that it could be the best version of the show that you can make. No, we wouldn't do it at all for them. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think what's what's tough is in that way of like the scientific method of, of if you're trying to measure something simply by having your instruments there, you change the result. Like if you're trying to measure something and you have a cold thermometer, it changes the, the temperature. That The fact that time has elapsed we are now going to get in some way, I don't know if it's gonna be like seven frames or an act, a different movie than actually that, that happened there. So maybe he's like, ooh, maybe Joss did some right stuff. Maybe maybe he's like, you know what, those ideas didn't really age too well. But I mean, you, you figure, when did this movie come out? 2017? 2017, It's been so long. <laughs> Mar yeah, wait, it, it came out in March 2020, it feels like, but. It hasn't actually come out yet because the real version was never released. Phil, do you remember we went to the Power 106 advanced screening? Oh, we, yes, yes. We, we had a, a promotional obligation to go to that. and yeah. Sponsored uh, by Surge. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Uh, um, no, I, I hear that, Phil. Okay, here's, now just to switch gears a little bit, is this a good thing? Because I do want to throw some shade to the negative aspects of the release the Snyder Cut movement. It did get really gross and terrible for a minute there. It's not everybody, and, and believe me, it is always the vocal minority, and we know that, and we know fandom is notorious for that. It's, you know, it's the the last Jedi doesn't, you know, isn't canon, that type of shit. And it's like, you know, it's the worst of the worst. Is this a good thing? Let me start with you, Elliot, because you made a face. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. They'll the release the Snyder Cut people, you know, definitely some toxic elements, definitely some wholesome elements, but yeah. overall, a cult. Uh, and the thing that bothered me the most about it was not really like the toxic aspects. It's just like this idea where the movie they got was so not good. They were so unwilling to just accept that the movie wasn't good. It was like, no, 
there has to be an actual version of the movie out there that is good. I refuse to accept that this movie that I was excited for just simply was a gigantic letdown. And uh, I don't know, it's interesting. Like on the one hand, it's cool that, you know, they're giving them what they want, I guess. <laughs> but it, it is funny that like, as soon as uh, Warner Brothers, you know, actually gave in, people immediately were just like, all right, uh, so let's get the Lord and Miller version of Solo and like, let's get the David Ayer cut. Like it, it, no one's ever gonna be satisfied now that they know they can just like yell on the internet for three years and get a new version of a movie that they really wanted to be it's good. It's gonna that make people insufferable. Well, I want to, I want to, before we go, I don't want to like skip over this. Also, wasn't I, it rooted in the fact that like Joss Whedon was like a radical feminist before he was canceled? Like that was like the original thing that he was going to like pussify the Justice League. No, I mean, I'm sure some people said that. The problem, <laughs> here's the thing. Zack Snyder did not watch this movie. That's very telling to me. The director yeah. has never seen the original Justice League. I don't know League. about that. Oh, oh, is that your new boyfriend? I don't know. I haven't been looking on your Facebook or Instagram I what, or Twitter. I don't know what your new said. husband looks like. I, I can't. I don't. You know what would be hilarious about that, Nick? Is if the Snyder Cone comes out and it's the exact same movie. <laughs> I swear I didn't look and it just anyway. turns out the ending's still the same. But I, but I do think there is, one, the toxicity has come down. I could say that from experience. Yeah, sure. yeah. I look at the comments they're gone. They're gone. Like people aren't, they aren't staring up the shit anymore. And that is, I don't, that's sort of worth it in, in some capacity, but as a company, can't you argue that you ignored a huge swath of like fandom by not giving them this movie? Like, but they it, are giving them the movie now, but they are now, but for a long time, but what years, were they supposed to do? The guy dropped off the project when it was like 70% finished. I mean, we, I don't want to get into the weeds about how or who or why he dropped. Like, cause that, that, that's speculation. Okay. Do 2017 know, at well, IMDb, November 17th, 2017 was the release date. Now let me Jesus. ruined, ruined everyone's turn Thanksgiving this gun back on, on you, on you, Nick. Um, if you were either of these people, a Joss Whedon or a, stu fuck it, a studio, Nick Gregorio Studios, would you release the Snyder Cut? Yes. You would? 100%. Yeah, and I, I and think that's the right answer. Like, they saw how many millions of people or whatever were... It's, 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 a, it's a movement. Like, yeah. like you were saying, it's a cult. It's a cult. -like I don't movement. think they should spend $100 million on it, but uh, they should, just, like, crap out whatever they have. I mean, there's going to be people that'll be crunching numbers... And they're going to figure out, like, how much should we spend? What are we going to make in subscribership? It's going to be in an algorithm. Oh, just like, yeah. all right, it, it, it's the Zack two, Snyder it's the gets things. 35 it's, million. Yeah, because it's, it's cost of customer acquisition when you think to, to lure new customers to HBO Max. But you look at a, a lot of the stuff that's happening on Netflix when they're gobbling up the new uh, Kumail and Issa Rae movie that was supposed to go to theaters, they paid 30 million for that. House of Cards cost Netflix 100 million for a season. Right. And people binge that shit in a day. So even though this isn't like a series, it's going to be that chatter. It's going to be that water cooler talk between you and your imaginary friend and your roommate and your dog because you can't yeah. leave your house and don't have a water cooler. Listen, right? I think it's but a much it's, better it, investment than anything that's been out on Quibi. And we'll get to Quibi. Oh, I think we can all agree on that point. <laughs> really quick, though, I got to uh, say, uh, uh, 64, my computer's 60... bleeping the Q word right now. Did you say, <laughs> could you say boop? <laughs> really quick, we uh, we had a huge uh, super chat from 64 Nerd. Uh, hey, bartender, I'm buying these four guys a round of drinks. Keep on the download. Thank you very much from 64 Nerd. Had to get, had to get that in there. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, going back to uh, is this the right move for Warner Brothers? Um, yes. I, all I can say is that yes, they had a, they have a, a grassroots marketing movement that they paid zero dollars for. Yeah. Uh, well, technically, they spent a lot of on it because they ruined a movie. But uh, <laughs> what did it cost them? <laughs> Everything. Uh, but my, so here's my question to you before I forget it, though, is we've already seen the Snyder cut of Dawn of Justice. Uh, I, I don't want to say Man of Steel because I did like Man of Steel. I know that there's different opinions on that movie. But uh, Dawn of Justice is, to me, not a great movie. And it kind of bummed me out. And there was a lot wrong with it. But that was his finalized vision are we well, do are, are we expecting something greater than the sum of its parts with uh justice league well so something i, I want to point out with bbs dawn of justice and again this movie grew on me you know i'm a, I'm a traditional batman guy i like yeah. him in his 
I don't You're like killing shill. people. I'm a shill. I'm a DC. You know, I've, I've dedicated my professional life. You're to, literally on the uh, payroll, Nick. I'm on the payroll. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> BBS grew on me because I looked at it as an adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns if Batman met Superman in that book. And we're talking about, like, you know, I think... A well, lot you know of why I didn't? Because that would be out. fucking stupid. Well, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Everybody say their mom's name and we can skip to the third act. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my Martha. God. I, Martha. I'm trying to make a, a real point here. Um, but no, but so if you look at it, it is a Batman. Like if you imagine the, the Batman he created wanted control and a godlike figure comes in and basically destroys half his city. He loses control. He loses himself. He becomes like this murderous, crazy Batman. And he goes to war with the God to try to like, again, rein that control in to have the control that he lost when he was a child. I, I think the story works a lot better. What I really love though, and what, what Snyder did was create the tragedy of Superman, a person trying to be hopeful in a dark world and constantly being knocked down. And even with all his power, I mean, there's, there's, there is some good. It's not, per believe me, it is not perfect. The, this, the first space bar was about like, what do we think BBS is going to be? And now we're here we are years later still yeah. talking about it. Um, but I do think the cinematography is dope. The sets, the costuming. There's a lot of there's a lot of good from that movie. Zack Snyder does make good looking movies. All right, I, I see. Not Elliot. to not to take things over, not to bring up the other topic that Nick is notorious for having opinions on, but uh, I think I mean I think uh, my problems with the DC EU are similar to my problems with like the final season of Game of Thrones, where you know. The if you look at like the major plot points written down on a piece of paper, like the bullet points, so, like it's all there. It's great. What's what's the problem? It's more about the execution and the pacing sure. and just how exactly uh you know they delivered on it. And I think the biggest problem with the DC universe is they, you know, they were trying to do their own thing. They weren't trying to copy Marvel, but they were definitely trying to play catch up. And uh, this is true. I think that's sort of like the foundational problem with all of it is just like, you know, Man of Steel was, I, I didn't really care for it, but it was a good Superman movie. It, it laid the groundwork for Superman. And then you go into BVS, there's just like, we don't have fucking time to explain Batman. You all know what Batman is. Well, let's just skip all that. Anyway, here's Batman. He's been doing this for 30 years. Uh, he's killing people now, and uh, he <laughs> wants to kill Superman. So, cool. We 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 all agree on that. Also, Lex Luthor's here, but uh, he's big fucking dork. We we decided to change that. Uh, and then they, like they took they went to the Landis spot and they went Max Landis. Oh, and then all so they BVS is already like rushing things a little bit, and then like Justice League is just like really fucking rushing things. Yes. Like. Not, it, it would have been cool to see these members of the team like actually have like conflicts about like what they believe about justice, the concept of that and like all that. But there was no fucking time. Like, you know, they spend like 40 minutes just putting the team together. And by then it's like, oh, God, we got to get things moving. We got to. We gotta, <laughs> well, just, yeah. It well, also, been, it, also, it, it all should have been stretched out like two more movies. So in, Justice in that League was supposed to be two movies. And this is, everyone that that's followed this knows that when it was announced, it was Justice League part one and two. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is true. And that was, that was supposed to be, that is the plan that, I mean, or that was the plan going into it. And then suddenly we weren't seeing set photos, weren't seeing anything. And then it was like, no, just one movie. And we're like, oh, okay. And but don't you think it, that had anything to do with the fact that BVS was so poorly received critically was, and, and Wonder Woman was so wonderfully received? So BVS did box office i'm telling you it, it had to do with yeah but like, they i don't think it did as high as they anticipated it was the literally no, no it did no but it, ben, was, it was ben affleck's highest grossing movie that he ever worked on and, was, and was, suicide was, no, squad also did yeah, bang yeah, we, we've yeah. talked about this ad nauseum that like y'all hated this i remember this you're like fuck that movie and, and warner brothers was like no like fuck y'all that movie made a lot of money yeah but here, uh, here here is a so, question though here, here here's the thing that that, that that's that I can't shake about this. Nick, you asked, is this a good idea? If this, what happened when you, when they said it took them years, yes, there's been a movement. They were taking ads out at New York Comic Con. They were going fucking crazy. But can we see the Lord and Miller cut of Solo? Do I get to see the Edgar Wright cut of Ant-Man now? 
this this opens this up and i know those are those are disney marvel properties and this leads to the air conversation but you have now empowered a group through bad behavior and you said i christen you dink you get you, you get your movie whether this is a one-off whether it's just marketing for hbo max but like it looks like they said squeaky wheel gets the uh, re- what uh, to, okay. to, before you get into the thing the box office on literally two of the biggest comic book characters of all time batman and superman not the avengers which you know a lot of people know all of the avengers but none of those none of those marvel characters were popular before yeah uh, to, oh, come to on. any hawkeye? degree before but, the movie but, but really hawkeye wasn't popular well okay, anyways I'll, anyways I'll, anyways uh, okay but but dawn of Ju- dawn of justice like the culmination the biggest two superheroes of all time coming together in one movie Yes, eight hundred and fifty million dollars is undeniably a lot of money. It did not hit a billion, and it it almost did half as well as the first Avengers movie. And I know they had a lot leading into it, but what I'm saying is, I think that Warner Brothers thought they had at least a billion dollar, or probably more, movie on their hands, and that and, was and disappointing. Yeah, you you could be right about that, um, and and may, maybe it was disappointing. But everything that I heard, at least the rumblings. It had nothing. It was more the court of public opinion. It was far less the actual box office growth. But Phil brought it up. We have to talk about this. Are you rewarding bad behavior? Isn't that marketing? Isn't that ticket sales? Isn't that like people want something and you give them what they want? I'm sorry. Like, I know that like people go about it the wrong way, but when sports fans want a head coach to be fired, things like that, like there are certain, I mean, to say that like this is a the free I'm market sure. has decided yeah but like i think you could argue that paying money to see uh the theatrical version of justice league was also rewarding bad behavior so so let me let me let me steal the host reins and i, I have a question of my own uh for for the two internet today formerly etc uh, gentlemen just while we're in the machine oh i haven't heard uh, that that word in a long time while, while we're in the machine of a time time warp uh <laughs> we're, we're, we're in a, like a, a fucking ups the upside down you guys <laughs> Famously made the prediction, whether, I don't know what the percentage of snarky to actual uh, prediction was that this would happen on HBO Max. I think we had talked about it and stuff. Yeah. How much of the, were you kidding? And how much were you like, I think that's going to fucking happen. No, every, 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 like, no, every prediction we ever make is something that, you know, if you just think about it logically, understand mm-hmm. business and how greedy everyone is, like, of course, of course they were going to, once there was, it hit a tipping point and there was clearly enough people out there who were into this idea, they were going to at least entertain it. They were at least going to like run the numbers and be like, okay, so if we were to do a Snyder cut, even though a real Snyder cut ain't real, if we were to do a <laughs> Snyder cut, like how much would that cost and how much could we get out of it? And also uh, we're making this streaming service and we're the last ones to the table with the streaming service. We need... We need something big. We need something that's going to get people talking. Like, it, it made sense. It was going to happen. Yeah, it, was, I, it monetarily made uh, the most possible sense. It was the perfect It was the perfect timing. If HBO Max didn't exist, neither would the Snyder Cut. It was the cross-pollination of two things mm-hmm. that were happening at Warner Brothers at the exact same time that allowed this to happen. Uh, and, but- and call me crazy, I don't think much can shoot right now, i.e., their Mandalorian. I don't. I'm not. I don't know if this is necessarily that, but this whole thing can be done in post. And well, while this pandemic is going on, if, for the most part, at least fixing what he thinks is wrong it, with what's already on tape. I, I don't. I, I don't think they're shooting anything new, are they? No. Yeah. I, I mean, the first really article said he called up Cyborg. There was a bunch of articles saying yeah. that he didn't call any of the cast, but the actor from that played Cyborg, Ray was like, Fisher. Yeah, he called me. Yeah. And I was freaked <laughs> out. And I was like, Yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but Ray Fisher can straight up set up a green screen in his house and record. So, no, oh, like, come the fuck you, on! You, okay, let me. Can I? Can, can I? Let me talk. He was in true detective. Go ahead. Go three, ahead. I Nick. Nick it, has right? the floor. I'll also yeah, shout out to Christopher Brown for another hundred fifty dollars. But Jesus, now Nick has the floor. What are you doing? <laughs> Give Rihanna a break. Um. So what we have? To... <laughs> no, but Phil and I we used to have these conversations all the time about that. It just didn't make sense. Just based off of cut, like streaming services aside, based off of director's cuts, we eventually got to a Donner cut. Apocalypse Now, which is owned by one man, has like four cuts. Blade Runner has multiple cuts. 
Is there a downside in releasing a cut? No, because it creates conversation about an old property and it puts money in your, it's money you already spent. You already sunk it in. But they're spending millions and millions and millions of more. Yeah, but they don't have to market it at all. Like, think about that. What what they're going to put into this is going to be all put into the movie. The marketing is done. The marketing is HBO Max. Any marketing they do for HBO Max is just going to have a Snyder Cut, like, tint to it and people will know to go there. Like everything is there. I mean, like I, I'm, I'm, I do this all the time when you can repurpose pre-existing stuff. I mean, when you can use B-roll, when you can use all this stuff, that's far more profitable than when you go to set and reshoot something from scratch. When so you're have- on the set of Good Plumbers right now, you can't set. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for this house by with, with the budget. <laughs> He's well, we gone. Mario's host. out of here, you piece of shit. <laughs> Right. But yeah, okay. no, I don't think I'm any sorry. of us almost left the bar in the stars. None of us. I just are, think it's gonna be it's gonna be funny when like there's like 40 new minutes of footage, but it's all the Justice League guys video chatting with each other. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, hey, uh, Oracle, uh, can you can you connect me to? <laughs> it's all Wayne Tech fucking. Yeah. <laughs> what what uh, I think, uh, or sorry, Nick, we're all on the same page when it comes to agreeing that this is smart financial sense for warner brothers what i think the biggest question that we haven't yet fully dived into is what will the end result be and will people actually really be blown away by it not they not people saying that it is the most amazing thing but actually what their feelings inside when they watch whatever the snyder cut ends up being will will it be the most amazing movie that they've ever seen, regardless of the fact that at least 70% of it has already been filmed and seen by the audience. It has to be. There's no, they have no other choice. They well, I, are going I, I, to I'm love saying, it. I'm saying not outwardly, not. only oh, honestly, oh, on the inside. Honestly, I, I, I we're not going to be, yeah. I, I mean, what I would, what I would love, I, cause I like, the, uh, of course, people are going to rep this. They're going to stand this no matter what. Some people are going to hate it. I'm sure some Snyder Cut converts are going to be like, fuck, oh, it was terrible. We, we should have never, they were right to like put this guy on the back burner. But there are going to be the devotees that talk about how great this is. What I do want though, for all the toxicity, you motherfuckers better go out and watch uh, Birds of Prey because that movie's actually a lot of fun. Oh, I loved it. Really cool. And you yeah, fucking Birds of Prey is good. You owe that shit to Birds of Prey because you did this whole Snyder Cut thing. So go out and watch Birds of Prey now because that is a different perspective. Because I, I'm uh, too many women. It's uh, <laughs> it just got so much like SJ Dove. No, I, I haven't Estra, seen it. Rick, Estra Jen? Is that Rick what you said, said it was good it's though? A, yeah, but I but no, I, I, I saw like, it twice. I saw it twice. It was so good. I really, really did works. love it, and I, I highly suggested it to anyone that would listen, especially on our show. I was like, I went into this with the lowest expectations possible. I thought the trailers made it look like absolute shit because the Marketing trailers terrible. The terrible trailers market. felt like Suicide Squad. I was like, I'm gonna get another 90 minutes of Suicide Squad, and I hated that movie. And I went and saw Birds of Prey, and I was like. It's not the greatest movie of all time, but compared to what I thought going awesome. in, I had a blast. It was fun. It was a fun movie. It was very Carpenter-esque. Big Trouble, Little China. Like, it, I mean, honestly, it's a movie made for nerds, and I was shocked that nerds were, like, boycotting. I was like, okay, dude, whatever. Figure shit Mike out. Lentz is in the chat. By the way. Hey, yeah, Mike, Mike, sorry. Mike Lentz <laughs> is asking about the, the shirt. It's a, it's a gar- <laughs> fucked up Garfield shirt, Mike. He asked if I was wearing a Megadeth shirt. Dude. It's Garfield. Dude. Relax. Yeah. My daughter has watched, so there's a CGI Garfield show. I know you guys I thought you were going to say Birds of Prey. About this. <laughs> My daughter has watched the CGI Garfield show, which has like 150 episodes. We watched that shit through like five times. It's on Netflix. Check it out. It's terrible. It's the worst thing you've ever seen. All right, Phil, you were going to say something. You were going to smoke. Have you guys. seen Scoob yet? Oh, Nick. God. Uh, uh, what times. the fuck was I going to say? Um, All right, let's just, let's just switch gears. A or cut. Let's get yes. the air cut. I want, I want to talk air about cut. the air cut. I want the air cut. Because I think this I'm is going to get a beer more... while Elliot starts. <laughs> the air cut's okay. actually a lot more interesting to me because, like, I don't know, the way, like, the w- Justice League to me, it seems like a movie that, like, obviously could have been better, but I think the problems are all sort of fundamental. Like, I don't, I don't think it's possible for the Justice League movie to be a great movie. I think they can okay. improve it and make the vision more, like, singular and you know, have it be less bad. But on the other hand, Suicide Squad is very clearly a movie where like David Ayer did not have any sort of final cut in his contract. 
Like he turned in the footage and then he had to just let it go. And yeah. even just based on the marketing, you can tell that they fucked with it so much. And end of watch fury. That movie looks nothing like that at all. Like there's yeah, and he's not- he's an interesting filmmaker because like half of what he makes is like kind of shit, but also like Fury is probably my favorite World War II movie of the last couple of years. Like just an incredibly good film, and it was jarring watching that, and then like a year later you watch Suicide Squad. You're like, what the fuck is this shit? And you could tell like as as someone who like I trained as an editor. I could tell, like, just right from the get-go, I'm like, this thing got fucking chopped up chopped with a machete. Marine. Like, they, you know, they they had, they took they took what was given to them, and they basically, the first 10 minutes of that movie is like a sizzle reel. It's like what you would it's do ridiculous. first to bring to, like, the studio head and be like, we need $100 million to make this movie, but it's in the actual movie. Oh, so, yeah. I I mean, that one, I'm I'm at least a lot more curious about what the actual original movie is because it so clearly is like something completely different there there's so, a yeah, for, 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 for this one I, I i was doing some research and i feel like nick we've talked about this or maybe we have on something but uh so i'm gonna hit i'm gonna send the link into chat now uh but uh well i can't send a link into chat never mind um, but their trailer a park is chat, a though. is a post house in Los Angeles that does all sorts of stuff. But they cut trailers for things, and they cut the trailer for Suicide Squad. And when that came out, everybody said that movie looks so dope. It looks so fun. It looks so funny. And Warner Brothers they saw what they had and they go, "What we have isn't fun or funny." So then, obviously, they ordered reshoots. But in this art, this Vulture article, if you type in Vulture, uh, Suicide Squad, whatever, but they talk about a key concern for Warner executives was that Suicide Squad didn't deliver on the fun, edgy tone promised in the strong teaser trailer for the film. So while Ayer pursued his original vision, Warner set about working on a different cut with an assist from Trailer Park, the company that had made the teaser. So they essentially outsourced and had a trailer house cut the film. In yeah. kind of a ghostwriter yeah. way, uh, and there, that there's was... like there's like ten uh, music like montages, montages? within yeah, it's, the it's first like Rocky Four. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the Rocky Four of superheroes. Well, so here's, here's... Holly, bring me Harley Quinn. So here's the the <laughs> the birthday. problem they ran into was uh, the constant comparison to, and I know things have now ended up working out that way with James Gunn. Directing. Guardians of the Galaxy. But so they had nonstop co- uh, connections to Guardians of the Galaxy. So it was the way that I compare the production of sui- or the post production of Suicide Squad is there's a there's a wonderfully famous animated gif of uh, a girl jumping off the high dive but she she gets scared the last second and decides oh. to to hold on and that wraps her around and she falls and starts hitting the other diving boards on the way down and that is kind I of like exactly what ha- what happened with Warner Brothers is they had something that Look, it could have been great. It could have been. It was at the very least Ayer's vision, but they got too caught up in what people were expecting, yeah. and they weren't confident enough in their own filmmakers to to release what they had made. They they decided to look towards what everyone else was doing and what the marketing team said, and it it ended up being a movie that was produced by committee instead of a visionary. And here, here's a big note. Everyone that made those decisions at Warner Brothers is gone. <laughs> Good. That is, that is the truth. Everyone that made the decisions to tamper with these projects that like, look, David Ayer, when he got brought on for Suicide Squad was the hottest director in Hollywood. Like yeah. Fury was like Oscar bait. People were going yeah. crazy for this. Like, and, and he did and End of Watch too, right? He did End yeah. of Watch, which yeah. was like, everyone saw it on Netflix and was like, holy shit, like, this yeah. is a really great movie. The, that's the dude's tone. That's his style. Yeah. And then when you see Suicide Squad, yeah, it's a music video. And you're like, I don't, I don't think any of this was playing. And yeah, again, I'm an editor. I started as an editor. When you see what they do to scenes, you're like, yo, they are all, like, they cut this scene up. And yeah. they, they tried to use the VFX to hide it with all the mirroring and like yeah. lower third. It was Saints Row. It was like, do, 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 mission clear. Well, apparently that was also. Like, it was fucking crazy. <laughs> apparently that was also an issue with Birds of Prey. And they ended up reshooting and bringing in the choreographer from John Wick to redo the fight scenes. Because apparently that was all chopped up to shit too. 
And it paid mm. off really well because those fight scenes are incredible. Some of them. They're great. Yeah. Um, I mean, I showed Mary, my wife, I was like, you got to watch Birds of Prey. I finally talked to her and she saw it and she was like, oh my God, why didn't anyone tell me this movie was good? I was like, I don't, the marketing was terrible. I'm like, this movie was perfect for so many, like it's a fun escapist, but I still feel like it has some indie, got some indie balls to it, right? She's like, like Nick, like baby, I love you. You know, I love you, but like you, you like the Justice League. So I, I obviously oh. didn't trust your opinion about this one. Well, and the other, the, so back, going, back, going back to, uh, going back to uh, that's Suicide a Squad. fantastic Mary he just did by the way. I'm just saying, <laughs> it was just I thought it was her. Uh, the uh, <laughs> he's also bald right now, so it worked. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the problems with Suicide Squad, I mean, everyone always says the 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 meme or the saying about DC is DC has the best villains, and back to back, fucking Dawn of Justice and Suicide Squad completely squandered their villains. Like there was. The the because Joker wasn't really a villain in Suicide Squad. He he was, but not the the boss battle. The boss in Suicide Squad was just terrible. It was two bosses. Oh my god, that yeah, was terrible. The Enchantress Suicide Squad bought like I mean there was there was nothing right about any of that. It, it, it's a shame. It's a shame because I think that movie was supposed to be, and I don't I don't love all that military masturbatory gun shit. But I think it was a little. It's supposed to be a bit more tactical, mm-hmm. a bit more street level. And then you have like, you have a British model dancing with a bunch of like overly done CGI. And then it felt reminiscent of like Double Dragons or a 90s kids action movie when the, the giant like fire monster fought the giant other monster and they were just these CGI. I got like Mortal Kombat. It's like Kombat. the Street Fighter movie. Yeah. yeah, Mortal Kombat 2. What was Mortal Kombat 2? The worst movie ever made? Annihilation? Mortal Kombat 2. Annihilation when they both <laughs> turn into monsters and they fight at the end. Like that's what that movie turned into, and it's just a shame because you were like, there is no way David Ayer was like, and then there's a hundred foot CGI monster fighting another. But then you have in Dawn of Justice, like you you made some very good points. There's some great scenes in that movie, but then like they smash too much in. You have uh, uh, what was it? It was Doomsday in that one, right? Yeah. And he lo- it, it, it looked you like a Ninja Lights Turtle. Off. He it was terrible. No, he's bad. Be- it, he looks like he looks like one of the uh, Orokai from. No, he looks like one of the the. Uh, oh, Phil's drinking. Um, the the creatures from uh, Lord of the Rings, the Orokai. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is fifteen years old. I'm sorry. He looks like an Elijah Wood. Yeah. Can we talk about Queeby? Okay, that's enough. Queeby. Wait, like wait, he- wait. So wait, wait, wait. Uh, to to put a pin uh, in the air cut. To put yeah. a pin in the air cut. Uh, do you think there is an actual without reshoots? Do you he think an air cut? Yes, I he, think he said it is. the past two days. He said it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And he's, he was like, "I have a cut. It's yeah, way, way less work than the Snyder cut. I 100 percent believe that because <laughs> and mine's made, less work. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the dude. Made, I mean if if you're if you're HBO Max and this is uh, less less thing uh, to speak on with director's cuts, but I get excited to know that streaming platforms like Netflix give Martin Scorsese and and directors like that platforms to make movies that are unadulterated. They might not be perfect, but yeah. they're making movies. We're, like we're allowed to making the movies they want to make. Work. Yes. Yeah. And we're allowed like we, we get movies like Roma that you would never that would never be a studio picture. That would never be a wide release picture, but you get that on these streaming platforms. And the fact that we might be able to have a multiverse much like comics because there's different versions of all the heroes in comics to have that on a platform like HBO Max, DC Universe, which I work for, but like to have the ability to get versions of characters and not be married to one thing. Like, I mean, look at Marvel. Marvel is now shoehorned and pigeonholed into making this one continuity. DC doesn't have to do that. They just put out a Joker movie that did well. Give us all the cuts. And they've uh, <laughs> they've <laughs> leaned into that hard with like the Crisis on Infinite Earths thing yeah. on their TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, the TV stuff? They had like Tom Welling from Smallville show up and yeah. uh, Ezra Miller showed up in yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, like let's lean into it. it. We live in the future now. Trolls just made $30 million on their opening weekend going does, direct. Does market. giving trolls what they want set a uh, bad precedent? <laughs> Nick, have you guys watched Scooby yet? Is Scuba hitting the house? Yes, so we've seen Scoop five times. We've seen Trolls a bunch oh, of times. Oh, no. It, it works. All right. Changing gears. Here we go. Wait, we wait, 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 wait. Nick, uh, Nick. Scoop talk, everybody. Hold on, Nick. We're going uh, scuba diving. Uh, I have housekeeping to get to since we're switching to topics. Yeah, we got a lot of, a lot of donos. Uh, we have to about. give a huge shout out to Christopher Brown, who is uh, dropping like crazy. 
Uh, we also have uh, Ray's became a new member. Zarko Sakovsky uh, says cheers. Ro- uh, Zombie Rob. Lee Mar became a new member. Boris Pastrikov. Uh, thank you for the dono. Degent Metal. Thank you very much. Uh, Dean Francis. Monku. Thank you very much, Monku. Matthew Callen. Cholo404. From Sirius. Dean Francis. Joshua Martinez. Seventh Hogage Naruto became a member. Thank you very much for that. Again, shout out to 64 Nerd for buying us all drinks. Uh, Bread and Shit. Samuel, thank you for the back-to-back ones. Uh, Chris Brown again. Monku, Josh Rocco, Anti-Environment became a member. Protocol became a member. Red Null became a member. Sean Fox, Monku, Red Null. They, I think we got everyone. Again, uh, YouTube keeps putting us in timeout, so uh, if you want to become a member, we would really uh, appreciate it. Hit the join button. Thank you very much. Uh, Nick, you now have the floor. Okay. We got to touch upon it. It was maybe the biggest misstep of any of these streaming platforms, Queeby. And Phil, I want to start with you because I'm sure you have like a, a tight 10 on Queeby. <laughs> what was that noise? Was that a Queeby? Oh, um, no. Yeah. So, quick so I'm, I love, I love the industry chit chat and all that stuff and everything coming up. Everyone was like, Quibi. Fucking, I know a guy, Quibi show, they're pitching. Quibi was at one point the Netflix you greenlit. As far as I know from from all the people that I talked to, and they're like, dude, we got to pitch Quibi show, we got to do this thing. And then I was told that Quibi stopped, uh, they slowed down, and then we, everybody kind of saw what happened. Um, in a really weird way, it's, I, I there's 10%, so, so um, Meg Whitman and Jeffrey Katzenberg had 1.8, billion or 2.8 billion dollars oh, whatever were, they were making billies they were throwing billies away. billions billions of dollars invested in an app that was quick bites that's what quibi stands for write it down it's fucking crazy and um when you're standing in line and you go boop uh instead of watching i don't know internet today or something you can watch a quibi and that's that was their thing it's high quality content their big thing katzenberg said i 100 percent put the blame of us not being successful on the pandemic and there's a little bit of me that believes that because here's the truth. When I come home, when I want to eat dinner on a hork it down and then go live my life, I want to watch something that's seven to nine minutes, but I don't want to open up YouTube and start. I don't want to open up Hulu or Netflix and start a show or start and finish and walk. I get that, but I still don't think that that's why this isn't doing well. I think um, the fact that they had no, uh, they had no TV support you couldn't stream it. You couldn't take screenshots of things. Um, when you look at TikTok, say what you will. I can't fucking stand it, but they are very smart. They put their branding, they put the user, and they go share away. You can't take screenshots of Quibi things and Quibi content and share it. So they did a lot of old school fucking uh, World War II boomer think behind it. And uh, I think that's what's showing right. Yeah, to, to, to kind of echo what you're saying, they wanted to put the production do- dollars, like the per minute production dollars of huge Hollywood feature films into their service, which we, we already know more money in the short form doesn't necessarily make it better, especially if it's you can't buy to- your way to viewership. No, you can't. Not with production value, with, with none of that stuff. So one, they're already blowing money fast, right? Out the gate. They're, they're spending a ton of money per minute. We've been doing uh, calculations on our show uh, for like how long it'll take them to make the money back. Our first estimate was like 72 years, but we amended it recently to be what, like 18 years? Yeah, it's like 22 years. If, yeah, and that's if every it, active <laughs> user becomes a paid subscriber. Yeah. Just to pay off and, the first year of their content. Yeah. And, and one of the words, Phil, that's a good look. That's a good look there. That's where heroes rise. <laughs> um, let's get dimberg on the phone to ask him about quibi he probably works there oh my god dimberg will give you a quick dimberg the first person that told me about quibi he was like you should consider pitching stuff to quibi i'm like what is what are you saying what is a quibi secure um, that bag nick but <laughs> but what something with quibi that really irked me was that they did not explore short form the way i wanted to see it they didn't give people that made short like short movies short films any money to do it like they made TV shows that were broken up into seven minute chunks. And I'm like, oh, here's another thing that I have to like commit to when really I'd love to sit there and be like, oh, Guillermo del Toro just made a short film. 
with a budget of like $3 million and it's 15 minutes long. Like that is what people want it. Like, I don't want to watch a TV show. So with the lady from game of Thrones, Nick, you are, you are absolutely right. Uh, Quibi was a marketed as a, I'm Jeffrey Katzenberg and I'm Meg Whitman and I'm right about what people want to see kind of marketed thing instead of marketing exactly what people were going to get. They marketed yeah. the whole app instead of the shows but also, uh, I agree with you in the sense that there is an unlimited pool of talent that could do some of the most amazing productions you could imagine with the smallest budget. And not not uh, small for for them, small for Quibi. Because if Quibi's throwing yeah. around that much money, imagine giving someone like Mike Diva $5 million and being like, take this and create a 10 episode series or something like that. It'd be amazing. And what I thought would be one of the greatest things that they could do is look at the talent that exists on Newgrounds and YouTube with animation. These animators are literally some of the greatest work I've ever seen. Some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life exists solely on Newgrounds and YouTube in short form but they cannot keep doing it and putting all of their time into creating these things that are their own vision because it's unmonetizable. Yeah. It, even on YouTube, if you create two minutes of an animation that takes you however many hundreds or thousands of hours, even if it gets a million views, you're not paying yourself enough through ad dollars to make sense of the time that you've sacrificed for it. So what it's Quibi impossible. could have done amazingly is create something like MTV did in the mid nineties called liquid television or something like cartoon network did in the late nineties, early two thousands, which was adult swim and actually put money into animation mm -hmm. because there's no one doing yeah. that outside of adult swim right now. And that I, stuff's easy. I mean, if you look at South park, what they used to do, they used to cut out pieces of like construction paper. Yeah. And then at some point in the aughts or two thousands, they were like, let's just make this with computers. And then it's not the animation that takes the time. It's the writing the episodes because they do it in 48 hours because they're all psychos. And that's the flip. And it's like, yeah, I mean, if you can if you can do all that stuff and crush it down, every episode you make is going to be more efficient than the last. All, all that it takes is people who know what they're doing and know their tools do that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah. that's why... I mean, like, I'm not doing a bit, but, like, that's why Machinima excelled. That's why Red V Blue excelled. That's why Sonic for Hire. That's why all these things, because people go, that speaks to me. And it was much cheaper than shooting something or creating full, like, reboot CD, you know, like, like CGI and stuff like that. So it's like, well, yeah, do it yeah. with the assets and make it work. And that's what's great, yeah. too, is, like, you once you have built out those assets, that's the reason South Park can have that quick turnaround is you've done all of the groundwork already. Mm -hmm. You've spent the money. Yeah. Then at that point, you're buying talent and you know, you're know you keeping the animation going and stuff like that. But someone in the chat brought up a good point. It would have worked out really well for them right now because specifically solo animation and sending in voice over work would have been a, the only production model that works right now. Yeah. They, they completely, they ignored every trend of digital platform. And we're like, no, no, no. Don't worry, we're old media. We got it. Like we know exactly what people want, and they want movie stars yeah. in glossy shows with a topic that is stretched over thirty-two episodes. Quibi is the episodes. perfect. Like it just doesn't make sense. Like Quibi I mean, is the perfect example. When when anyone asks what it was like working at a media company, Quibi is the best example I can give of this is what executives think you want. Yep. I, but I, I I will I will say this and then and then we can we can move on or, or you guys can no take let's over. stay we can stay on this forever if, I, like, I, if, love, I love shitting on Quibi <laughs> no, no 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 I, I love how much were money right was if they were right everyone would be like they're fucking geniuses because they they really went against the grain and that's that's the one thing I can say about this is that they were because that that's what I was alluding to when I was like when I sit down and I fucking whip up microwave a dinner or whatever. And I'm like, I had a day. I just want to watch something that's less than 10 minutes that I don't have, I don't have to search for that's it. curated. That's like here. But do you want like, that to be serialized or do you want it to be standalone? In my opinion, I want it stand. I, I want, want it standalone, standalone or, stand or at least something that has clean edit points where it's like yeah. it starts 
And it's like, all right, next time I can go great. Because even whether, whether you know, I have all the bullshit shows I watch on Hulu that like, you know, the office and scrubs and like whatever that I put on like the background that I've seen before. And I'm like, look, I'm going to clean or I'm going to do work. Or I'm going to write or read or whatever. But like, I don't want that sometimes. Sometimes you're like, I just want some new, decent quality content. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that sucks when you go, I mean, you guys all know, like we all know firsthand, like if you start searching on YouTube, or on your DVR or on Hulu or Netflix or fucking whatever. It's like you spend 20 minutes looking for something to get in a bad mood. And you're like, whatever, yeah. I'm just going to fucking put on a podcast. Uh, someone like, in the, someone in the comments made a good point. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, turn it into, into another kind of uh, thing, but it's like, if Quibi is like, you told your grandma that you really want a, a Netflix subscription for Christmas. And then you open up the box and it's a gift card for Quibi. So you're like, that's, that's what people want, right? That's yeah. all the kids. They love the Quibi. It's Lee, what is it? Lee Caravano's putting challenge when Bart wanted bone storm yeah. or something instead. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's, I have, insane. I have the perfect analogy. My I got you a Quibi. I had, my grandfather had an arcade across the street from my house in South Philadelphia. I was dreaming about street fighter two. It had just come out. He goes, Nick, I got street fighter two. It was Streets of Rage 4. <laughs> That's it. That's what it is. That's what Quibi is. The and knockoff. I, and I showed up and I had to fucking play. Everyone in the chat has been. Still a great movie. Everyone in the chat is uh, accurate. We have Netflix at home. We got Netflix, Netflix at home. At home. <laughs> uh, really, really quick, not to bring the mood down because we'll keep shitting on Quibi. I think we have some more uh, ammo in the gun there. But uh, Smiley Reviews dropped a 50 and said, My uncle, who watched every single one of your shows, uh, has just suddenly died. Thank you for the laughs you gave us over the years. Very sorry to hear that. Smiley reviews. Uh, Our condolences, Smiley. Uh, 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 very, in, very sorry to hear about your uncle. F's in the chat. F's in the chat. Pay some respect. Yeah, sorry to hear about that. Uh, Avril, thank you for the uh, thank you for the super chat. Jamie Martinez became a new member, and then Brandon uh, Smizek, fifty dollars. Thank you for the years of content. Favorite YouTube channel since college. Brandon, if you if we've been your favorite YouTube channel since college, if you've been watching since ETC, you're at least uh, in your fifties now. He died. I think he died like thirty years ago. That's crazy. Um, I'm I'm very sad that uh, uh, Elliot, Nick, and Phil are not seeing the just immense production quality that went into this live stream. No, I've I've got it open on another window. Are you seeing? Yeah, I've it open. Are you I'm seeing how, how really... great you look on your solo cam, Phil? Talk talk and then look at your dude. Solo when it, when solo it pops cam. in, I start cranking with my non dom and I'm edging. I'm edging, and I don't even know if you can tell it. My non dom. <laughs> yeah, look I'm good. That. Boom! Look at this. I'm in yeah. a spaceship with a with a with a sunspot right back. No, sorry, with a sunspot right back there. That it, at least on my computer, well, uh, it's an Elliot, so you can't see it. Phil, uh, just a just a quick tip: you shouldn't keep, uh, you know, works of fine art in direct sunlight. It will uh, fade the pigments. Yeah, it was a yeah, I, I, terrible. I, I I put this up. Be, Is that so a I print or actual be. like art? Uh, 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 no, it's an hand. actual. It's an actual piece. It's an actual. Get piece. It out of the sun. Uh, Get it out of the sun. sun. Look! 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 It's it's here. It's here just to break up the the blinds. Look stupid. Uh, uh, the the twenty second story, which no one gives a shit about. Uh, one of the first times I got together uh, with Jenna, I was like, "Hey," she's like, "Put something on." I'm like, "Uh," and I went on Netflix, and Buffalo sixty six was there. And if anybody's seen it, uh, it's a fucked up movie. And I'm from Buffalo, and I put it on. And she's like, "That was a good movie." And I was like, "You're a keeper." And that was it. And then so uh, for her uh, birthday, I had this uh, piece commissioned. It's a, a scene from Buffalo. 66. It's a commission. Anyway, damn, yeah, I commissioned it. Yeah. Wow. Benefactor Phil, patron yeah. of the arts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh blah 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 but yeah i put it up so i wouldn't be seamed between two things and it's uh made things worse because i have to talk about it now so. and then your layer it's losing all of its value in the in the sun in the sun yeah. well i hung that wallpaper that you're seeing in the background with my father this past yeah nick you oh. you if i had to guess which one of you william Phil or nick is wallpaper. the one with like two small children uh based on these uh <laughs> These yeah. webcam shots, I would pick Phil because Nick yeah. is clearly like a bachelor uh, pad. <laughs> Nick is yeah. clearly living in a penthouse in Miami and he's going out right after the stream to go get some tail. Well, oh Phil God. clearly, you know, he's he's got two screaming kids in the next room. Hey and guys, can you make sure the video goes up closed. within like the next 20 minutes? I gotta show him <laughs> that I was just on this show. <laughs> so this is that's a changing table. That's where you change poop at 15 oh. times a day. 
<laughs> what a lovely room to put that in. Yeah, you know, you put it in a nice room. But yeah, we, me and my dad wallpapered that. Uh, thanks. My Get my in. cat's Come asleep on. right here, <laughs> in a chair that a chair that's just in the middle of the room because we have no other place to put it. Yeah, you can't see it behind my giant gamer chair, but it's just trash. It's just a giant pile of trash behind me. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like having kids motivates you. There's a there's I'll a lovely plastic bag there. I I don't know. I think there's something important in it, so I won't get rid of it. But it's been there for weeks. Uh, there's a pile of clothes. There's a pile of clothes there. Uh, no room to put it anywhere. Um, and, uh, and then the cat, the lovely cat. So what do you guys think? You think uh, it's time to park the space bar at the? Uh... <laughs> no. Listen. No. Here's we're my... here's, no here's we just why... got here. Here's <laughs> why I'm so upset with Quibi. All right, go into. Ricky, We've only been off. live for an hour. What... Go it. off, King. Yeah, you're not going anywhere, Nick. We're not. Tell we're your not... wife and kids to yeah. stay at McDonald's. Well, for they're going to be hour. circling the block. Yeah, like they were widen, the, widen those eyes. We're going to see some weird shit in the background. <laughs> Why don't you just tell them to like, this is the only time you had was them actually gone from the house? They can go to the park. You're allowed to go to the park. They, okay, let me just, before we go back into Quibi, this is what being a parent with young kids during the quarantine is. 24-7, you are parenting and working. It's full-time both. My kids don't stop for nothing. Yeah. They don't stop at any moment in the day. Yeah, but you haven't been doing shit. What's your wife do? Does she work from home? Yes, we both work from home. We're both. Yeah, isn't your wife like both. a lawyer? Isn't she like the breadwinner? She's an actuary. Yeah, I don't make any money, honestly. <laughs> most- <laughs> I mostly this is just a charity thing. I do this. I do charity streams. I grew a beard out. I'm not even attractive to her anymore. I gotta like up my value again. Oh. So, uh- <laughs> <laughs> no, you look great. You look great. Welcome to Truth Stream. Truth What's Stream. <laughs> I'm uh, not sad. You are. Well, since Nick's not going anywhere, <laughs> we're here. We're let's keep it going. I can. I, I mean, can tell it. him to come home, but like you can't yeah, leave. Can't. Obviously, it's, nah, it's not going to. I'm going to. I'm going to do a quick in. lap and grab some beers. I will be back okay. in, in a moment, but I can still okay. hear everybody. Okay, here's okay. why I'm pissed about Quibi. Let me go. Uh, of the many reasons. But this is why it has offended at least me, and I hope that I can – I don't hope, but I I assume that I'm speaking on behalf of Elliot as well, is that Quibi came out after the downfall of content creation, the, the, the peak of content creation as far as independence. Yeah. Qu- Quibi was – Quibi came out at the perfect time where every major media company had completely bought out and gutted YouTube. Now it's finally flourishing again through actual creators being independent, but all these companies were like these big MCNs and then the big money came in and they were throwing money around and, and making people do these other shows that weren't the same as the shows that made them big. And then a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people, like, their channels went under. A lot of stuff, a lot of really bad stuff happened. And then on the tail end of that, this company comes in and says, we know how to do digital media. And we're going to spend nearly $2 billion proving that we're right. And imagine what you could have done. Imagine what you could have done with the old 2012 machinima roster with two billion dollars instead of instead of just enlisting huge hollywood actors to somehow anchor your entire platform because they're famous like without even quantifying what kind of actual reach they have online because it's uh, i get very this this is what frustrated me is that all of these companies squandered a bunch of money attempting to do the right thing the wrong way and then a digital company came in and just said no all this has been wrong everyone that's watching digital content online is wrong we're going to show you how it's right and we're going to waste two billion dollars getting there dude yeah hollywood is still insular there's still a ton of nepotism they do not care they do not care to grow their sphere like they want to do like they were looking forward to this moment in time where they can be like hey all you new people you're wrong and we know exactly how to do it. And the problem is, it's not even their money. That that two billion dollars wasn't theirs, so they didn't gamble anything. Like Jeffrey Katzenberg isn't about to fucking like starve. 
No. You know what I mean? He's going right. to go out and make another production. And that's the, that's the joke of this industry if you've worked in it long enough is that the people that are in charge and in control, they'll always tell you how they have the best idea and how this is the way to do something contrary to what's going on. I mean, we yeah, just- once, once you reach a certain level of uh, power in the entertainment business, it's impossible to get knocked down a peg unless impossible. you do something like blatantly illegal or like yeah. racist or sexist yeah. or something like that. Or if but you have like, that, that button on your desk that locks the door behind women that come in, like Matt Lauer. Yeah. But, but still, Matt Lauer's oh, wait, still did you see it when I did... in the Hamptons. I, I, let, oh let me, my God, let me, did you uh... see Matt Lauer's tattoo? His tattoo? Oh, it's terrible. It's like, fuck, terrible. It's, it's, some, it's basically it's... like, fuck the haters, but in a more eloquent yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> but scribble, um, scribbled on his arm freehand. Yeah. Week, it's there. it's real bad. I got Nick, Nikki, Nikki G can, can attest to this. Uh, so when we came into Machinima after all the old guard, after the majority of the loved people had gone, we were bringing our sensibilities in. And, you know, Nick was coming from a filmmaker place. And again, correct me if I'm wrong or any of this stuff. And I was coming from TV, but like, we were like, so let's get like a second cam and a third cam and a jib and all these things. And when we would post videos, uh, people would be like, why are you cutting away? Why are we seeing the side of his face? Fuck you, we don't want this. And we were like, no, 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 you do. And they were like, no, 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 we don't, fuck you. And people were pretty upset because we were trying to tell them what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And very quickly you realize like, you can't will somebody into going, look, look, I know better than you and I know what you want. And like, I, it's like, that's not how it works. And there was some, some of that with Quibi when uh, they naive, when, you know, uh, Meg Whitman was like, uh, we, you know, we, we didn't really think about that or process that, that people might want to watch on a TV. I'm like, really? You didn't think that people wouldn't want to watch things on a TV? No. Just like any closed platform, you want to lock them into an ecosystem so that you can stay on a walled garden of an iOS device or an Android device or whatever, so that you can make sure they don't capture things and they watch on your terms, not the viewer's terms. And I think that they're kind of seeing that now that when we were like, let's introduce a second angle. And they're like, fuck you, you pieces of shit. Like, that's Qu Quibi, Quibi's meeting some resistance. Uh, as yeah. a... As a uh... <laughs> A great point to bring up that is an example of that. The fact that when John Krasinski sold his good news show yes. to CBS, he said that he would Follow be re reaching a wider audience on CBS's paywall streaming app than on fucking Preach. YouTube. That was that Preach. was the thing that offended me the most. Did anyone watch that fucking trash? No one is touching that. No real people are watching that. That's like fans of Rhett and Link. Do they exist? Are they out there? <laughs> they tune in for that shit. Who is Damn. watching that? Ooh, oh my no. God. They need to be my clients. Who the fuck is watching that shit? I don't understand. Oh, my God. With John Krasinski, I'm like, who watched your show that was on? I didn't realize, Nick, I didn't realize famous. we were the final scene of fucking Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and you just flamethrowing right sorry. now. I'm sorry, but John Krasinski's like, hey, guess what? I set up a camera in my house because I'm bored and now I have a show on CB. Come on, man. It's a, it's a setup. You don't know you're being hustled yeah. from the word go. The, the, best, always the best part was like, uh, uh, there was like a John Krasinski apologist thread on Reddit where just like, he doesn't even need this show. So it's like kind of great that he did this and he can just walk away. And I was like, if, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whew. If I was getting 10 million views an episode, uh, there's no fucking way I would walk away from shit. And there's no way I would sell it to CBS because do you know how much fucking money 10 million views an episode is in a year it's a lot that's your 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 he uh, someone was like oh someone was like i remember on the thread being like uh someone saying well you know john krasinski's worth 30 million dollars so he doesn't really need this and i was like 30 million dollars everyone needs 30 money, million dollars everyone are you fucking needs kidding money. me do you not like <laughs> fucking uh no, PewDiePie, PewDiePie, pewdiepie made 20 million dollars in one year on YouTube getting less views than that on an average video. And John Krasinski doesn't want that money? Like, no, of course no, he's going to fucking he sell this and get rid of it. it. And not host it. Yeah, he gets to sell it, essentially franchise it, get the licensing fee, and just be like, cool, I made 10 of these. And that was his work. That was his legwork on the thing. And like, <laughs> I, I can, I respect the hustle, but the whole thing about it was, it was like, it's some good news. It's, the theater. It's, it's, I don't it's, fuck with the theater. It was the I laziest the hustle, fucking fuck the lazy. The we, so we even did an episode uh, like two years ago that was like, 
we, we literally did a good news episode because I was like, eh, everything sucks right now. Why don't we do an episode of good news? And I'm not saying that I want $20 million. I would say absolutely no. Get away from me. No, no you know, I, I get that about you. I they get say, that you're done. They say more money, right. more problems. And, you know, they write. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I just like how this like it, it started off in the course of a month. It went from like this like wholesome, organic piece of content. Just like, you know, a lot of these other celebrities, they're they're you know, it's, a, it's very hit and miss with how they're dealing with the quarantine. But like Office Jim, he's out there. He makes a, you know, a wholesome YouTube show to make everyone feel better during a stressful time. And like fucking four weeks later, it's like, all right, time to cash out. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's so, the, that's Eddie, the actual problem. So funny. Every, a, a, as people are saying in the video. comments, yes, I would take that money in an instant. Oh, of course, no, but like also, that's wrong. There's nothing wrong with if, that. It it's just like it it all just seems so disingenuous yeah. in like such a short period of time. Yeah, that it's just, yeah. It's like well, you need to stop falling for this shit. These people don't yeah. care about you. I, so yeah. it's to jump to jump on that though. Like even the SNL, like SNL at home. Mixed results, but I'm saying they're they're they're, they're trying. They're, yeah, they're, they're they're doing they're doing some stuff. But when uh, Colin Jost is doing his uh, weekend update, we would watch it, and Jenna's like, D-. she was like heckling him. She's yelling at the TV. She's like, don't act like Scarlett Johansson isn't behind the camera, or yeah. she's not like having coffee. Like, are you done yet? Are you done with your little video? Like. Don't pretend he's like, oh, oh, shucks. Like he's fucking Morty over like, oh, geez, yeah. guys. It's like, don't, you're in a fucking penthouse. That's, that's a, it's a $4 million penthouse. Don't act like yeah. the, you know, like, fuck you. You're not a fucking comedian living in a, in a one bedroom, just like trying to make ends meet, dude. You're like, you're married to Scarlett Johansson. She's the biggest female movie star in the world. Yeah. So what I have uh, to say about Quibi. <laughs> uh, dash, dash. Is, uh, it's sort of, I mean, Quibi. people have sort of, addressed parts of this but like um i think quibi would have been a lot more successful if uh their content strategy was basically uh like the justice league you know uniting uh a bunch of forces like people you know the people making sketches at college humor and funny or die and uh action figures comics and like other uh like all these like laid off video teams in digital media. Uh, if if those people had all been picked up by one big company willing to actually support it, like cracked, like if they had if they had come out the gate and been like, we're yes. pretty much only doing comedy. There's no there's no there's no real way to do drama or any other like serious genre in this self imposed like short form format that we've given us. But sketch comedy and other like comedy shorts that's perfect for this and there's a ton of people have been out of work uh in that space for a while who Mm -hmm. were making great shit they could have gone for pennies on the dollar not it could it could have been should have done that but still well like so you remember when funny or die started off like 12 years ago it was specifically like it was its own platform and it was about sort of like being the destination for uh sketch comedy like i had friends who were making sketch videos at the time and it was like a way bigger deal to get upvoted on funny or die than it was to get upvoted on youtube and like obviously they pivoted once youtube became dominant but i think like quibi like their best chance of being relevant as a short form mobile first video platform would have been uh as a sketch comedy destination they could have bought yeah. out Cracked sure. for next to nothing and, and had a and Cracked it's, channel. Yeah. That's the other thing, so, too, is like Quibi doesn't have channels. They have videos. They have to scroll through. Like if you had a Cracked oh, channel on there. And, there, and, there, and there's no, there's no like, like, like back channel. Like, you know, if they could have taken people. Like, there are, there are tons of people out there who are, also, who are talented, who are not on the stream, who are like really capable. And it's like, look, you can, you can make a patchwork of these things and just say, oh, well, with, just like you're, you have... You know, you have MTV and you have BET and you formerly Spike, which is the Paramount Network and like whatever. Like, like the way cable finds an audience that's a, a wide swath and a rainbow of stuff, like you can find it out there. You get your your old standbys, your rent links, you get your new up and comers where nobody's and like you make new programming versus like let's take Punked, which was helmed by Ashton Kutcher and let's put Chance the Rapper who's kind of the opposite of him, who's a really nice person who does like charitable stuff 
and let's make him the bad guy who yeah. punks people. And I'm like, that doesn't really make sense. Like that doesn't track for me that the nice guy is the dick who's. Yeah. Not, not to like, you know, show you guys a glimpse behind the curtain, but our sketches used to run anywhere from 700 to a thousand dollars per minute. Our most expensive sketch was like two, $3,000 a minute, just to give you perspective. Which one and was that? Good plums? That, that was a uh, bank heist. Good plums cost $4,000. In Damn. total. Yeah. So like our sketches back in the day, we were we were going to like Hollywood costume and prop houses, getting period accurate costumes when we did the battlefield one in the desert, driving yeah. out to the desert. So like and that wasn't like a bunch of hooligans getting in a van and trying to make a movie. We were straight up going through a full production. We were had we had insurance, we had permits for stuff. So just for perspective, our most expensive sp- sketch was fifteen thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars somewhere in that range people like can you imagine if we had a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars yeah and, but like, you're not taking into consideration like the cost of salary drugs of our drug involved. addictions everyone involved cost of salary is a that's that's what like could be everyone's got to get paid like uh you got you guys were ba- what i'm saying is specifically you guys were baked into the cost of that not there, there's everyone an overhead the with the studio and all this. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of people that were doing cost. contract work, but your cost was baked in the same way that like exactly. when they when Machinima used to get me and Elliot to do random shit like mm-hmm. AFK, they were spending zero dollars on talent appearing in it. Not saying we're talented, but that would have cost them at, at the time for the production and the sponsorships that they were doing. That would have cost them thousands upon thousands of dollars. And we got zero dollars outside of our salary for that copy that but i'm saying even if you take if you break it down and everyone gets paid like if we got a director's fee we got writer's fee we got producer's fees it's still like we would have a hard time reaching that two hundred thousand dollar mark for something that's like five minutes long seven minutes long ten minutes long without lining your pockets and like skimming but the problem nick is that you're not you're not famous you're not chrissy teigen okay there we go But that's 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 the fallacy. <laughs> Breaking Nick yeah. Gregorio is not Chrissy Teigen. Ba, 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 that's ba. the that's the fallacy that all all of these execs fall into, is that pre predisposed fame equals success, which yeah. is if the I most can, not true. And also, it ever can't made. It, it can't be a niche product out the gate that grows. It has to be. <laughs> everyone's favorite thing from day Byron. one, which yeah, is out fucking the delusional. Yes, absolutely. Nick Gregorio, delusional. I don't know how many times you've heard me say this in a meeting and every time there was a pause and people go, so how do we, when you go from one platform to another, so let's say Nick and I post a video and then on my Twitter, Nick's Twitter, and let's say Ricky and Elliot jump in on Twitter and you post a link. When you go from one social media platform to another, you bring 1% yeah of your audience. Now, how many of your audience clicks on that? 1%. So what you do is you take however many followers you have and you move the decimal two points. So even if you have 10,000 followers and you move it over, 100 people click that link. That's how it works. And people don't get that. And from 2010 until 2016, all that people did, all these old people were just like, get a blank. Get this guy, get this girl, get him to tweet it out. And you go, that doesn't matter because Quibi does not accept tweets. It is not well, the same platform. Also, when you when you look at it as, a, when you peel back the curtain of this whole kind of digital media setup, a famous personality is a life, Let's just say is Ricky a life Martin. vest. A okay. famous personality for an executive is a life vest on a sinking boat for the responsibility of a failed project. 100%, so, yeah. so, oh, so, here's so if, a, if, a pro, if they have a project that costs $100,000 and it's with a bunch of unknowns and it doesn't do well, that looks back on the executive that approved it. If they have a $100,000 project, but Chrissy Teigen is attached to it, then it's mm-hmm. everyone else's fault except for the executive because they got Chrissy Teigen on board. 100%. And also, yeah. I'll tell you this. As long as it's someone's friend or cousin or person that they need to get on the show, they will justify all their numbers. And I've seen that firsthand. I've seen people that have zero. We've lived this. Zero that. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen people that have absolutely no pull. And like when you look at their stat sheet, you're like, wow, this is going to be amazing. And they show up and do nothing. 
Yeah. They do zero. We have Am Lindsay I Harris. wrong? No, it's the 100 employees I'm about to fire who are wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had Lindsay Payless. We had Lindsay Payless in one of our sketches. She was at the time one of the biggest like Instagram model people. It Seven, did, six, eight, ten. I mean, like millions, millions, millions of followers, like hundreds of thousands of likes and shit on, on Instagram. It did. It was one of the right compared to Michael Jai White, compared to some yeah. of the other bigger things. It did terrible. It did like 3000 views. Awesome. We were like, how is that possible? How is that possible? Like, it, you, you can't quantify, right? Grassroots yeah. is something that no one wants to believe in. No one wants to want to do. But then not to go back to the beginning of our conversation, the Snyder Cut happens because of a grassroots movement grassroots and like true look at you different. pulling it back yeah. look at that but that's like that that's pro production right there it ultimately works yeah uh, another quippy comment uh david farrier a guy i i really respect he made the movie tickled one of my favorite documentaries oh, yeah. ever well, wonderful fantastic and film. uh he had a netflix show called um dark tourism but he he tweeted this like uh yesterday he said have been working for three years now on getting access for a documentary subject i'm incredibly passionate and excited about but was broken last week when a gatekeeper came back for the umpteenth time this time with a new angle we pitched a quibby three years and i admit defeat so he's just like i'm not doing it sorry guys that that project is officially dead i'd rather not make it than make it and have it go to quibby does it involve anyone famous yeah, and also breaking ish news earlier today. It's Wall Street Journal, so it's behind a paywall. But uh, all the advertisers for Quibi are uh, demanding to renegotiate <laughs> their deals. Uh, oh, you mean you, you mean only it. only Bud Light and T-Mobile, the two only advertisers that I've ever uh, seen. It says PepsiCo, okay. Yum Brands, Anheuser Busch, and Walmart. They've all asked for like changes to their CPMs because they were you know they were pitched like the world. And that's yeah. not happening. Yeah, I, I could still take Quibi and make a good platform out of that. It, the, the idea no, is no, 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 no. That that shit that's is cute that it, it already has the stank on it. You can't do it. Oh, that's true. I, I already tried that once. I guess. No, right, you so. could start a new oh, Quibi. No. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it again, Nick. Right. I'll put it back up. <laughs> you literally can't blow the stink off a turd and tell people to eat it. I'm sorry. But it, it is also what, Brandon is in the chat. I want to say hi to Brandon. Big yeah, shout Brandon out to Brandon. Winfrey's in the cut. Yeah, shout out uh, to Brandon Winfrey. Hey, really quick, um, we have uh, Hillary with a super chat. Hillary uh, Clinton, Mar Mario B uh, with a super chat. JC Garcia became a new member. Jay Kemma, thank you. Monku, James the Sheriff Dixon, and Mu Mucha Macucci, Mooching Macucci. Uh, thank okay. you, thank you very much. Uh, again, we're doing, we're doing a we're doing a membership drive here, so click the join button, become yeah. a member, and don't forget to what watch our most recent bag. episode of uh, Weekly Weird News because yeah, it was put into hidden, time. Out. It's hard to find, but you can't find on computer. Uh, Nick, you can't leave because our views, ironically, have been going up with you on camera. Yeah, I um, listen. I, I I've always had a great time with you guys. I think honest in all, in all in all genuine when I saw the Snyder cut drop the fir my first thought was like we got to get the band back together <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and you didn't go run into Quibi you I didn't go, go run into Quibi. Anyone. I don't know. Game here. You came running into right the internet today yeah. Mucha thank you for becoming a new member can uh, I uh, can I shout out something that I worked on recently no. oh yeah Bill, Bill uh, yeah I, I was I was going to yeah you should do this I um, haven't gotten around to listening to it, but I, I plan to, I swear to God. But please, please pitch your uh, thing right now. Oh, so I took one of a feature length screenplays I was trying to produce, came close to producing a few years ago, and I've just been tweaking it with my writing partner, Ben David Al, uh, and I turned it into a radio play podcast. A one Phil Larigo is one of the stars of it. It's an ensemble cast. It's a horror thriller. It takes place in a roadside bar between uh, Pennsylvania and New York. It's called Not Like Us. And uh, spoiler alert, it's a, like an invasion of the body snatchers. Uh, yeah, you, you pitched this to me like a little over a year ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you went the audio play route. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a good idea for like people that have scripts that are kind of just like, there's a lot of maybe too many steps to get it made, but like, it's a great way to actually produce something uh, uh, for, cause you, like yeah. how, how hard I'm, I'm curious, like how difficult, how time consuming, how expensive it was to like do it this way. 
so the expense wasn't the, I have a, you know, again I have a lot of great actors and talent as friends Phil Rigo being one of them so like I reached out to everybody that I knew that I knew was at home like this was all made during quarantine um but it takes some editing software there's a there's a uh website called freesounds.org that you could get all the sound yeah. elements you need uh and I just I sent the script out I gave some notes on how to record it and I mean, Phil recorded on his phone. Some people recorded on like their VO boots. And uh, it was it was a great experience taking it all in. It was people I worked with over the past 10 years and I put it all together. And I had, I had wrote some roles for, uh, for in the movie for uh, like Phil for Mike Burns, a friend of ours, who's Pizza Nacho, Dad Boner. He does the Power Moves podcast. Sam Levine from Freaks and Geeks. Rachel Kimsey, who voiced Wonder Woman. So there was a lot of people that I had, I had written roles for and I knew everyone was home. And I was like, look, I can, I can mix this and I can whip it together. And uh, Drew Marion, who cut all of the Dank Fire sketches with us, uh, he worked on it too. So it was, a, it was a really fun experience. And I think it is, it takes a lot, but if you can get- Send me the uh, link so I can put it in yeah, the Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna yeah. look at your Twitter right now and find the link to drop it in the chat. I, I, I do gotta say- Here we uh, go. This is a very rare uh, thing that I get to be in as talent, but not produce, which is very nice. Uh, the difference, if anyone in the chat uh, or watching doesn't know the difference, it's sort of like when you have to cook Thanksgiving dinner and then eat it, and you're like, I know how much work went to this. Or you just show up to someone else's Thanksgiving dinner and you did nothing and you just get drunk and eat and you leave and you go, whatever, later bitches. Um, I got to just be talent, which is capital R rare. <laughs> and um, it's really super fun. Uh, and it's always the I, best. I gotta say, Mike Burns uh, fucking kills it because Mike Burns, that is his kind of dad boner character he's playing. Yeah. Again, my word's not his, but goddamn Dan Mills. Dan Mills. Still in the Didn't... chat. I'm not. I like, love Dan was, Mills. Now, that, Dan, Dan, I miss Mills, you so much. Quibby needs to give Dan Mills a billion dollars. So, so I'm, Dan I'm not kidding. Dan Mills has gives in a fucking performance where I'm like, yo, he outclassed. He is such a good actor. Oh, good. Dan Mills, are you still in the chat? You fucking better be so fucking good. Give Dan, Dan so Mills a billion dollars. Gills. So Give Dan, Dan Mills is, a Gundam. He wrote he wrote the uh, monologue that he performed. So that wow. was awesome. And I and like normally when you're when you're shooting something like I can't I don't know if I'll be able to cast Dan Mills. It all come down to that, but like. The fact that the guy that wrote the monologue got to perform the monologue. And yeah, he, yeah. He's steeped in like military culture and he, he knows oh, that dude, jargon it's... shit. And um, he just did such an amazing job. And I mean, the whole, the whole cast did an amazing job. It, it was weird. Like when you're editing a script you've worked on for so long and you have those, the cans on and you're like cutting it, the room starts to take shape. But like there's Phil, there's Mike Burns. Oh shit, Dan Mills, he's gigantic. How did he fit into this bar? Like, a li- like it, it was just a lot of it was a lot of fun. To- so, did everyone yeah. record their dialogue completely independently, like animation style? Yep. Did you? So, did you have to like have anyone redo anything because it maybe didn't like gel or like? Because um, that's always a weird way I, to I, do I, acting. Guilty. I still owe you a line. I, I was like, did I send you that? I, let me send you that. And I just no, I got it. I got it. It, but, was, the, it was the guy thing. I already okay. I, the, the first one I got said, that. Okay. Um, no, that, that's I, honestly. I, I sat with Sam Levine. We went through his lines because he wanted to make sure he nailed it. Uh, but it was, um, it was. It, I, I looked at it like an indie movie where I'm like, look, I want to get the performance that I get. It's on the page. If you can nail it on the page, then fuck. Like you're going to be in the ballpark. And uh, I, I mean, I had to cut, I, I cut it all together and that took a ton of time. The, the, the cutting and the mixing, because, you know, like I was saying, like some yeah, people were using- You want everything to be even or whatever. Yeah, um, but it was really it was really interesting to see how, and, and as a like some things that worked on the page and something that, that didn't work work on the page, and you can omit it and use sound effects to fill in the gaps. But it's really interesting that like, as long as you are diligent about your writing, that shit will come through. I, I don't know. That's just a testament to be like. Hold, sure. hold, hold on, you are being incredibly modest. The sound design is that of a movie or a game as as it's not like people like uh hello what, what's going on like there's fucking like click click what's that like it is a fully sound design thing so it's almost like you're in a vr experience like fucking smoke a joint use it to go to bed 
fucking take a bath. I don't care. Like go on a run. I don't know. But like, it is really, really good. And that was the thing that I was so impressed by that. Like when I gave Nick, I was like, um, hey, is this my time? Is that my game? Like a couple of reads. And the thing that came back, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. So, so Nick and Drew and like everything that went in, like there was a, a ton of it. It is fully sound designed, like a game where you hear like guns reloading yeah. and people moving and breaths and this and that and doors closing. It's not a low budget thing. Like it is a fully immersive situation. I just want to say uh, if, if Nick or anyone else wants to do a radio play right now, uh, my brother literally like sound designs like BBC radio plays for years and he was furloughed from Disney. So if anyone needs someone to do that, uh, he is he is available. Oh my God! I have two chapters <laughs> left. It's Whoa. oh, yeah. <laughs> it's I, I right can put now. you. I can put you in touch because he is bored as shit. He calls yes, my please. wife at like one a.m. last night. He's just like, "Hey, you guys up?" <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Elliot won't answer the phone. I need someone to hang out with six no, feet I, away. I, I oh, literally okay. did not answer the call. Then he called my wife like two seconds later. Like, uh, oh, yes, but, yeah, yeah. Put me in touch with him because I. Yeah. It's, it's me at at nine forty five after my kids are asleep, just being like. And there's some footsteps. Here's a creek. There's a creek. There's a bar. There's a bottle being lifted off of a thing. But I, I honestly, it's uh, it's been a an amazing experience, and and like having everybody work on it. And um, Elliot, I had you, I had you size for a character, but yeah, uh, that's uh, the only thing. I was like, what the fuck? I thought I had a role. You, did. you didn't. Have, you don't have enough hair now, bitch. That's what happened. <laughs> Shaved it off. But it was. I, I I I swear to God, everyone that I wrote the script for read for their parts i didn't think it was going to happen I, I was like no way i was like there's absolutely no way i'm gonna yeah. get everyone to want to do this and everyone was like yeah sure and i was like what yeah no it's, it's yeah. cool as long as you as long as you give me and ricky rolls in the next one yeah you got it you then we're good it. <laughs> it's called it, it's called the quibi exchange it's yeah. where you take over quibi but you have to give up your souls oh okay all right cool. to, to to finish us out uh we we here in los angeles we're still all locked away. How's everyone been dealing with it? Uh, uh, Nick, you're in a very, we've already talked about it, but a unique situation where you have children to take care of. Uh, what have you been doing to uh, keep your sanity outside of, outside of the podcast? We just already heard about that. But what, what, what's your thing that keeps you, uh, keeps you normal in this situation? Oh, God. Um, uh, Elliot's got- fucking bleeding out of his head right now. Oh, no, it's the, the headphones are sticking to my head. The oh, I thought those I- were scabs. No, it's I, the, little, I, the little plastic pieces. I thought you were the guy from No Dot with the little <laughs> horns shaved into your heads. Uh, like I'm going to get a drink and pee, but go ahead, Nick. I, I'm sure it's a really yeah, interesting story. We'll do story. Nick and then Phil and then get out of it. <laughs> um, it's yeah. so condescending. I know. It's There's nothing interesting about it. No, he's like, hey, sounds good. I'm going to go throw up. Um, the, I, something I'm really excited about is I get to spend more time with my kids than I ever got, than I ever imagined, right? Like, they were in daycare, Mary and I work in full time, and we've had a solid, it's been solid, a solid two and a half months with the kids. And I watched them grow. I got to learn with them. We watch shows. We have joke like my daughter loves superheroes. My daughter Audrey and my daughter Eva like went from a baby to like a toddler to like a kid now in this time. So that is something that I will. I know I'm going to look back on this moment as much as as stressful as it is and be like, I got to spend time with my kids that I would have never, never got otherwise. So that's been awesome. Flip side, I would like to go to a restaurant with my friends and have like we did Christmas and have some beers and go out and have some drinks yeah, yeah. and steaks and all that good stuff. Uh, that is what I miss. I, if, if, I'm sure you guys could tell. I'm a chatty guy uh, to be home and locked away and kind of being away from friends and stuff that that's been tough, but it's been great to spend time with my family and uh, to really like be a part of my kids' lives on a day-to-day basis. Well, but as soon is- as they open bars, we need to do a, uh, e- even if they open, like, cause I, I feel like LA is going to do like a thing where it's like, Hey, uh, what, what's the bar that we go to? Uh, what's it, what's it fucking called? The one in Burbank? Tony's Tony's so Tony's be like okay you like five people can come uh yeah we, like have it have it spaced out we'll sit on the patio but yes we do have to do like a uh, spatial patio hangout so I let me let me uh venture this so uh this this uh Memorial Day weekend is Jenna's birthday 
every year, I guess wow. it's or the same around Memorial Day. Happy birthday, we, Jenna. We retooled the backyard so that we can set up for three households so that there can be three distinct areas where people cannot breathe in each other oh. more than six feet apart. So I don't know if, if Ricky and Elliot count as a household because I feel like you guys are- Oh, we're already, no, we're, we're already we're a part of the loop. same, uh, uh, we're yeah. in the same circle. You guys, you guys are like, you, you guys are doing, you're, you're there. Yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know if, the, if that happens with Nick, but I think we should we can all have some drinks here. Um, and, and we Everyone can... was very impressed by your, uh, Backyard. backyard in the last it's, couple segments you've done for us they're like damn phil living it's been, it up um, miami uh, phil so so that's that's let me seg segue off of that so there there are there are two there are there are two phils and they go like this there is paranoid <laughs> phil who's ordering food and supplies yeah. and stuff and always getting the thing there's other things that it's just like you gotta be fucking zen with this, and this is what I, what I what I try to impart to everybody, like in our industry, or like whether you're in a different city or whatever. But like, you can't really change this, and you can be prepared, or you can be be. I don't care if you have like zero dollars or a billion dollars or whatever, but like, at some point, once you kind of accept what's going on, I'm not saying like cave to whatever, whatever, but like, okay, I can't change this. And then in my sphere, what can you do? And that's where I'm kind of finding the, the, the don't freak outness about the whole thing. So it's like, I do some writing, you know, some working stuff like this. That's kind of like uh, the, the Venn diagram where the two overlap, but like also at the same time, it's like, just fuck around and like get some, like order some booze and like do your thing. But also like eat healthy, work up, don't drink for a month. Again, first time. I am so impressed that you managed to do that. Yeah, that's I, wild. My alcohol consumption, <laughs> like for the last like two years, was so low. I was pretty much only drinking on like Fridays and Saturdays, and that was after like years of like hard drinking during yeah. my like machinima period. But all of my progress went away like as soon as this pandemic hit. Like I I pretty much drink every night now, <laughs> and it's like it's not great. I don't sleep very well. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of nights it's like literally like one or two glasses of wine, but even even still, like I uh, I miss you know the last two years where I I thought I had control over this, but I, I feel like no, but like I feel like you've been the healthiest out of the bunch. Like I feel like you've you've slimmed down. Like you've you've really gotten to a spot where like I'm like oh that motherfucker's like on it, and I'm just like yeah, I mean like in the bathroom. Yeah, it's it's sort of just like lucky happenstance that I've been like trying to lead a more healthy lifestyle for the last like year. So, you know, coming into the pandemic, it's like obviously I'm going to keep like working out and like try to eat good and shit. But it's still I like I, I'd be I'd look amazing right now if not for the pandemic. Uh, yeah, because right. I'm, I'm, I'm ingesting yeah, like, me, hundreds me, of me extra too. calories. <laughs> I, I do. I do have to say that, like, if I was a single man there is no way I would be responsible in any way, shape or form. So I, I give mad props to anyone that's not going completely fucking ham right now, because I, this would not be a good situation if I didn't have children. I swear to God, like I would be a mess if I didn't have children. Well, how, I, how's your Nick's family? Like, you uh, crack? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, how, how's your family over on, well, I, yeah, both, I mean, both of you have family on the East coast, but like, how, there, how's that working out? They're, they're taking it seriously. You know what I Good. mean? They're, they're, they're staying in. They're taking it seriously. My favorite video from this past week was uh, a bunch of Staten Islanders just like getting fucking furious at some bitch not wearing a mask in a yes, supermarket. Yes, so like, Hey, get the I, fuck out. Hey, hey, <laughs> you ain't wearing a mask. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. When oh, I, was in a, right. I was in a UPS, like I was just there to drop off an Amazon return thing. <laughs> uh i was in a i was and i was like finally my turn because you have to you have to stand in these little blocks on the floor and then people have to wait outside and i was like next up and this guy walks in without a mask and stands in one of the blocks and i i turned to my wife and i and like audibly so he could hear it went look at that fucking loser without a mask like to just shame <laughs> on purpose and he just he didn't say anything he just sat there and stared at me the entire time and then, like, I like went out of my way to like socially distance on the way out. Like, it felt felt pretty good. But yeah, people people get yeah. people are fucking very angry about that shaming video. They're like, 
on the wrong side of being like, oh, yeah, freedoms, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, it takes absolutely no effort to wear your fucking yeah, mask. Yeah, also like inside. that, that no. specific part of Staten Island, it's like the, the mortality rate was like, and the infection rate just like through the fucking roof. Like everyone there is justified in being pissed. Yeah. I mean, my, my father is still hanging wallpaper. He's a union wallpaper hanger. He stopped kind of running his own business and went back to the union so he can retire. And he has to, like, he has to go out and work. So I want to make sure, like, I want people doing the best practices possible. Like, I don't, like, you know, like, like Phil was saying, like, you, you know, you go from ex one extreme to another, but I don't want to see people give up everything, but like, just do it responsibly. It's not like, like he said, we can't change this. Yeah. We're in this situation. If you work in the entertainment industry, shit's not going to pop off till 2021. Like yeah. that's a fact. Like everyone is accepting that 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 is a fact of life. Well, actually, so, they already. Uh, uh, Jason Blum has apparently come up with the universal model, where it's like, yeah, they're gonna his his idea that they seem to be into is like for the next at least six months, uh, just pivot all their production to on the studio lot where everything can be like controlled, controlled. just like no yeah. more on location filming. Everything is like very tightly controlled. You walk onto one of the, the hangers, like you're getting your temperature checked. You're going through TSA basically. I, I think yeah, that's probably how it's going to work for a little while. Yeah. There's going to be a two week quarantine for anyone that's working on a production. Then you stay on the set or in a controlled environment or whatever. Um, I, I think, I think UFC did the best and, and like say what you will about the company or, or the people or whatever. But like when, when they had their last pay-per-view, they had, approximately with like I'm, I'm talking like venue specific but also like tv production and like commentators and fighters and everything less than 200 people but everybody yeah. got tested everybody got temperature checked everybody was like gloves masks like all all the stuff and it went and it's like look i'm sorry but like if you're a multi-billion dollar company like that's kind of what you have to do yeah although yeah. rogan was uh rogan was apparently a, a big bitch about like not not happy yeah not he's happy like i'm it. not yeah. gonna stand six feet away from the guys i'm interviewing i'm healthy look at me i'm joe rogan i just made a hundred million dollars on spotify but i gotta i gotta say uh i listened to his podcast like i'm not i'm, not, I'm, not, I'm buying in but because it's the, one of the longest podcasts. So I can it's too do long. Shit. I don't know how anyone and, can do it. Oh, it's no. Too long. When, when I'm just in the back shooting heroin and just passing <laughs> up. No, but like. Shooting straight DMZ. Like you, yeah, you turn it on and it goes. But like he would test most people when they would come to his place. And then when they come in, he's like, yeah, we'll know in an hour. And I'm like, why are you testing them after the podcast? Or why are you getting the results after the podcast? Can't be like, hey, let's have sex and we'll, we'll get our results, you know, in about three days. Like. <laughs> what so i don't know what the fuck he's doing but yeah i, I think well, he uh so uh, and I, 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 wanna, I do want to make a point here because I, I i personally have a lot of friends that have been affected by this in a very very negative way and i just want to say that like this when i'm critiquing or when we <laughs> critique anyone that's like not where elliot has the covid the cops are coming I by. It. I can hear it. I got the roadie. When I'm critiquing people that aren't wearing masks or I'm critiquing states for opening up early, it's not because for any other reason other than like we're handling this so poorly and it's not because I want people to suffer financial burdens or that I want the country to suffer economically. Yeah. The thing that I'm so pissed about is that regardless of who is currently president, although this is a much worse scenario, th this is one of those put hopefully once in a lifetime situations where this affects every person in the country. The government at this point, regardless of what side you're on, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, whatever, this is one of those country and realistically worldwide scenarios where our government should have stepped up and made it possible for people to follow the rules. The yeah, reason people a, are so like... tired of dealing with this bullshit is because they are losing their homes. They're in medical debt. Mm -hmm. They're in debt with their businesses. They're in debt in general, and they can't possibly follow the rules that are being suggested because yeah. there is no social 
economic safety net. And that's what people need to be mad about. Not it should have been yeah. it should have been right. at you can't beginning even of April. The federal government. You have to talk about like look what Gavin Newsom is doing. Gavin Newsom shut down California. He has no plans in place for anything. He took his time. This but is- it, does, it it only works at like America, you know, you can see it. Oh, it's like 50 states, basically like 50 countries. But uh, we have open borders with all these states. It's like constitutionally illegal to shut down state borders. So containing a, a virus, you have to do it at the state level. And we would have been in a good shape if it, if like mid-March or even like early April, if the federal government had gone ahead and just said, all right, everyone's getting $2,000 for the month of April. Stay the fuck home. Don't go anywhere. Everyone gets $2,000. Don't do anything. This is a whole country. But instead, yeah. you get this like patchwork fucking thing uh, of like different rules for different states. And then Congress passes the stimulus thing, which is good, but not enough for most people. And also has a bunch of and, terrible uh, loopholes that yeah. people fall through. Yeah, and it's like a one-time yeah. thing as well. Yeah. The, is- the issue is, is like, like I-, I think with any any type of problem, the-, the-, the longer you're around, you go, how do I cut the head off the snake? Like, how do I start at the top and then find the cascade that goes down? And you go, what is it? And you go, one of the biggest things is mortgages. So if you own a property, you you say you don't have to pay your mortgage. And then if, therefore, everybody who has pays rent, you do not have to pay rent. Yeah. And then, and oh, it just, a, fr- it a freeze on mortgage and rent would have been yes. incredible. That, yeah, that, that would have been there. there because- so problems. Hold on. Let's just, let's look at this. No one knew how long this was going to take. It was supposed to be two weeks. Everyone knew from the beginning months. that it was going to be a year before any mean? vaccine was even plausible. No, dude, there was no, no one knew how long this was going. to Early take. March, it's fucking impossible. Fauci said it would be at least a year before you, a vaccine what I'm saying was plausible. Is you can turn off mortgages and rent and all that shit for a month or yeah. two months. Just or put it on to the end. Or whatever it is. Tack it on to the end. If no yeah, one's I mean, paying, not- then everyone's even. It's frustrating because it's like you'd think after 2008, the U.S. government would have a fuck ton of leverage with like the banks that do mortgages. Like you'd think we would have their balls in a vice and we'd be able to say, look, money fuck isn't you. real. We all know that. But right now, money actually isn't real and you're not taking mortgage payments that you're going to tack that on to the end of the 30 year. Right now, it doesn't exist like after the fucking subprime mortgage crisis, you'd think the U.S. government would have enough leverage to be able to say that. But no, we've all we, our memory is so fucking short. So I, listen, my, listen, my, listen. Here's the problem that okay. happens right now is that you have like, oh, great. We have, so, uh, so however many people got this twelve hundred dollar fucking stimulus in March or a, end of March towards the beginning of April. But the fact of the matter is is regardless uh and it's been two months and nothing else has been passed but there's been these ideas floating of here's another 2000 or here's 2500 or here's 1200 but none of that has actually happened so people are left in limbo and it's going to be the 31st yeah. on what sub- sunday or yeah. monday and like what what i mean like, I, what the fuck is I going didn't on? get my check a, i got my check like three days ago and it's like i didn't i didn't need it but it was it's hilarious. I was like, I had completely forgotten about it. it was like, like, imagine oh, if you had lost up. your job and then <laughs> yeah. like, you get it no, in May. I, I completely agree. My my biggest concern right now, and I think again, it's like we're stuck in this situation, and I am I'm terrified that we now have a physical representation for our divide in yes. this country. Like it shouldn't it be worse. like that though. And it shouldn't <laughs> be like that. And it, no, one hundred percent should not be like that. And that. That's what like I, what saddens me. What makes it like tough for me to like embrace all of this? It's like yes, we should be asking questions, but also we should be good citizens. Like there is like there everything is so. There's divided. no civility at all. There isn't, and now we're we're dealing with like a a a physical manifestation of our divide, and I'm like I'm kind of terrified. Like being that's what the like, the I best got, part about seeing those videos of people partying is like I look at that. Well, it's, it's uh, in an extreme example, like the ones that were shown this weekend, it's like, I would have been nervous it's anyway tough. around a lot I of people, look. but like, yeah. you know what I want to do right now? I'd love to go have a party with my friends or go out to a bar that yeah. looks great, but yeah. like, we can't do it. <laughs> like, And th- that's the thing that's so fucking frustrating. It's like during world war two, did they just go like, we're over it. Did fucking during any any pandemic did Ebola? They just got guys were over Ebola. Like it doesn't work. If I have a fuck, if I have cancer, I can't just be like I'm over it. Like it doesn't work like that. And that's what sucks. 
because like yeah. 70 days is kind of where we're at. And it appears that like, that's where the most groomed humans with the yeah. most shit around them are, are get bored. And it's just like, oh, fuck y'all. And, yeah. and, and it doesn't, ma- I'm not saying it's geographical or, 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 you know, based no, on, on, on money or like anything like that. It's just like, it just sucks because everybody knows someone from their hometown who's like opposite of you. And you're like, oh, this motherfucker is just, they want to go out. They want, well, cause I look, look, I'm young and I'm healthy. The, the, the funny thing for me, not funny. It's fucking, it's stupid, but like, it's like my wife, like just happened to like, horrible happenstance like she uh, she discovered just like a health condition that she was born with but like she didn't like it wasn't uh, she didn't figure it out until like literally right as this was about to happen and it's just like oh she's like she's immunocompromised if she gets fucking COVID-19 she's going to be in a very bad situation uh and so many people are just like well I'm fine so who does it care I'm young it doesn't kill young people and it's like well a lot of people have health conditions where if they do get sick, they are fucked. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a really fun little bit of irony that that's yeah, what came to my household, like right as this shit was when hitting. It all, when it all comes down to it, uh, well, there's two There's two things. Is One, the country as a whole wasn't prepared in a sense that people aren't going to be taken care of here. They're not going to be taken mm-hmm. care of financially, when they're losing their businesses, they're losing their jobs, they're losing their livelihoods, their kids are now having to work from home or do school from home. They're, if you're lucky, like we are being able to work from home and, and there's, no, there's no safety net for that. But also on the other hand, of, on the other side of things, even if, even if we did have those things in place, America is this very strange land where even if we did have socialized medicine and social safety nets to protect people from going outside within two months, I guarantee you that a lot of fucking people would have gone out and partied anyway, because that's just the mindset yeah, that bored. exists. That's what they want, when man. You yeah, Americans don't like being told what to do. Dude. It's it's as simple as and, that. They don't like being told like, what to do. I, and, and this is, this is what upsets me is it is again, the, the problem with the Snyder Cut, it's the vocal minority. You know what I mean? <laughs> Full it's, circle. It's the vocal minority. It's like, the 20 I'm, dudes I'm, I'm on there. the steps at Michigan <laughs> with the fucking rocket launchers. And I'm like, how Governor, many rocket launchers are in Michigan? Cut. You're 100% is, right, Nick. But it is. You're 100% it's, right. It's not, all of it, like, really, like, by and large, like, I've come across, I've, I've grown up in the, the city of Philadelphia. I've been to California, New Jersey, upper middle class, like, poor people. And by and large, people just want to get along. They want to fucking worry about their own shit. People don't want to stir it up. There's a certain breed that wants to stir it up. And you, you, you fucking know the type. Yeah, but thank like, you, Taylor Harris, for the dono. We might you. do more of this. And, we definitely need to do more space bar. Yeah, I, I'm down for more space bar. <laughs> if you are, if you are, Nick, I'm down. Uh, hoorah, hoorah. He hates it. He hates it real bad. <laughs> no, Nick, you love this. Fucking hate them. Nick's been off camera for the last like year and a half, and it's been eating him away inside. I know it. I so, know it. I, I I gave up. I threw no, it away. No, no. Nick away, yeah. Nick loves being on camera. The beard grew in Nick Gregorio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I mean it's it's just it's just a bummer that like all all of the like when we shame people, it creates more divides because everyone like suddenly someone who would never do that is like, but I, I kind of think it's dumb to wear a mask. And now they're like, that's a rallying cry. I don't know. I just, I don't know if it's like the dad in me now, but I just wish we didn't just vilify every fucking thing because you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Well, I, yeah, but I that's agree a, with the that. problem is that like wearing a mask is now a political statement, but that's why yeah. I've been like trying to like, Bummer. everyone, if you're, if you see someone not wearing a mask, I, I wish it wouldn't end up in gun violence, but you should tell them they're a fucking loser. Like they should be shamed yeah. into, into doing it because it's like, that's the thing is that lady in Staten Island, everyone around her was doing quote unquote, the right thing. Whether you agree that's with why it. Or I not. love New Yorkers. I love East coasters. That would never happen in California In California. Everyone's just been like glaring. Oh, hold at on. It. Hold on. I have to interject <laughs> with, with, with two very real things quickly. Um, <laughs> the dog got sick. I had to take the dog in. The vet came in and said, hey, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go do some tests. I'll come right back. 
we, when the vet came back, I was petting the dog to keep her calm. I look up the vet, a doctor had her mask down here. Oh, come on. And I went, I'm talking to, I'm talking to, to the vet for 15 seconds. And I look up and I'm like, the damage is done. When I yeah. when my fucking phone broke, when I had to go to a new place, blah, 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 I got my phone. I'm dealing with the dude for 15 minutes. He had his mask below his nose. So that's two in a, the single week. And I'm like, what do I, do I make a shitty comment? Do I tell a doctor? Like, I'm sorry, it's an animal doctor, but that's like, the, she's a that's fucking the funny doctor. One, that's the funny one too, is because like, as far as I've read transmission wise to spread it out is through the mouth. So people who wear it directly under the nose are only receiving it and, pr- yeah. and protecting the other way around. Yeah, thank you yeah. It's just, for your service. <laughs> but like, I, yeah. I didn't say the either way because I'm like, these are people who are they're going to do it for me, and they're going to be like, they're going to doubly not do it once I'm gone. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not going to fucking stir the pot. But it's like, these are people who who's who's who are galvanized. They have their shit, their minds made up, and it sucks that it's like you're a doctor, man. Come on. Yeah. I I don't. I mean, this is this is. If you guys want me to do another space bar, you got to let me go because my wife is going to kill me. No, we're, we're almost done. I'm going to give a shout out <laughs> bring, to... Uh... Bring them in. Hey, hey what's hey, up? When your wife wants to kill you, what what do you talk about? Marvel, DC? Do <laughs> uh, you talk about when No Man's Sky was a good game? What are we doing here? Come on. Uh, uh, Ethan uh, McNamara, if you guys want to get shouted out, uh, become a member right now. Click the join button. Uh, Ethan McNamara, thank you for becoming a member. KC with the super chat. Uh, Jorge, aka George Estrada, with a new membership. Ghost Killer 06 okay. with a super chat, not a pie. Uh, Garrett became a new member. Thank you very much, Garrett. Uh, Ember with a five dollars. Avril, uh, five dollars. Rude, Rude and I De Silva became a member. Then we have Riley Mech. Uh, so Riley Mech brings up a good point. There, there is some like there are things in place for people who are medically legitimately medically not predisposed to wearing masks because of issues. The problem is you have a lot of people in America right now that see that and they do the same thing as when it got popular to have uh, medical animals. Yep. Yep. That's it. Yeah. No, all those videos where it's just like, Oh, well actually my doctor said I couldn't wear a mask. I'm like, uh, your voice would probably be a lot more nasally if, like, I'm just saying, you would you would sound different, and I don't believe you. Also, this is my you. emotional support ostrich that I'm bringing yeah, on a flight right now. I do not believe you. Uh, so, no, yes, yes, Rodney, there, is, there is... With every mask I wear. This right? is, that is, a, that is an issue, and the problem is, uh, Riley, who said that, the problem is, is you have a bunch of people who take advantage of people who do have probable reasons to not do that so but that's the thing like with that big costco one the guy was just like look i mean give us a list of what you want to buy well we'll bring it out to you and she's just like no we need to have like we need to make a mask 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 that says that i don't need to wear masks when i got my phone it was at a costco and the dude that's where the dude has masks so for every good costco guy every, it's a bad costco every time sure. every time i've seen that image sucks. of uh, the illustration of like the illustration where it's like this is what it looks like when you wear a mask below your nose and it's the person wearing their briefs below their dick yeah. i literally anytime i see someone wearing the mask below their nose all i can picture is their nose being a penis and it bothers me even more than before so I, i'm i'm mad that you brought this up that's a good here's, one. That was that's here's, a funny here's one. Here's how I look when I go out. I took a picture today and I was like, I look fucking ridiculous, oh. but no one can see me, so it doesn't matter. Like, it looks like I'm wearing. Like, you can't fucking. Why are you embarrassed? This is how I look when I go out. I look, I have a hat and an giant glasses and a mask on, so no one knows who I am. Why would I be embarrassed? No, I, and it's just look. It's fucking America. Like, it's the world. It's not just America. It's the world. We're, you know. People don't follow the rules. Jeez. Like, think, think about it. Just think about, like, think about... Well, it seems geez, like a right? lot of people do, except for Americans who are told literally not to follow the, the rules. No, but okay. I, I mean, we can go down that path. I, I prefer not to. But most people... Look, Phil went to a doctor who had the mask below their nose. It's a doctor. That's what a veterinary! Did... It was a vet. I was pissed. Wow. When, but when, when she came back out and I was petting the dog, I look up and she has it here. And I'm like... You fucking kidding me? 
It was a bummer. Dude, she's not spreading I, it. She's just sucking it in. Yeah. I'm a parent. We are so fucked. You can't do it. I don't leave my house. I left my house five times. I went to Home Depot and I went to the supermarket three times. Most of the time we Instacart. Oh, yeah. So, so we're like, we're completely held hostage because it's like, yeah, you, you might kill your kid. So you're like, no. Nah, kids gonna- are fine. They'll kill you. Right? But like that, that's the situation I'm in right now. So it's like everyone is dealing with different situations. I'm, like I was saying, if I was a single man, I'd be like, I'm good. I'm going to take my chances. And that's, that's the truth. That is the truth. Yeah. Uh, anyways, sorry. we're at the, Nick, you're the one that needs to go, and then you fucking get on these tirades. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, right. Why don't you shut it down? Hold on so nobody has to put a mask. Nick, is your family just, like, sitting outside the place in an SUV Why right is now? daddy so Waiting angry, mom? No, Mary is driving around the block with the kids. I'm I'm going to have to. Why is dad so angry? Yeah. If dad doesn't no. shut up, I'm going to touch a doorknob and rub his face. I, uh, the truth be told, my kids have rocked me harder in my face than any of the men I've been in fistfights with. I've had, yeah. I yeah. got like a fat Whoa. lip right now. And that's yeah, after they get a good insane. grip of like a public restroom they're door both, handle. They're both little girls, right? Yeah. Bruises. One of my, I'm sorry. One of my biggest things, I just want to put this out there. This is, no one's going to give a shit about this but me. But like, so The Blacklist is a show I do not watch <laughs> and I do not give a fuck about. But, they didn't finish their finale episode. Oh my god! So what they did was they got a previs <laughs> company, a company who makes things that's like basically storyboards for TV shows and movies, a pre-visualization company. Um, and it looks like a PS2. Um, uh, uh, it looks like a game. demo for a Telltale game. Yeah. It so looks this like is what shit. the actual NBC oh. show looks like. Because they couldn't shoot uh, what they were doing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Elliot's reflected in the thing. But if you look at it, it's it's straight up PS2 graphics. Yeah, um, I, I, but I recommend everyone nothing... look up look up clips for this because it's hard to really yeah. convey like how terrible it is. But oh, that man. but that that kind of goes back to like the the big thing that that we were talking about. It's like there's creative ways and like I can't fault NBC for that because like they're like, look, we want to put this show out. We want to keep our like release cadence like fuck it let's go and if i watch the show i'm like would i rather wait 18 months for this to come out or just have some shitty ps2 graphic some like cutscene? it's rocket i say but good for that i'm not yeah. a doctor who fan but they apparently doctor who did like a couple of animated specials back in the day like not that long ago but uh they yeah they all looked like that and everyone hated them because it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, just, what are you doing? Just shoot just something. Just do more. the radio play. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just do the radio play. You can okay. call me. I'll do your radio play. What, uh, Nick, so so how do we release this? Do you want to tweet it and then we all retweet? Or like, how do we? What, what's I'm going to put the, it in the chat again. Put it in the chat. Okay. Nick's radio play. And you can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify. And then oh, yeah, it's all over the place. It's fucking real easy. But yeah, why not do it as a radio play? I don't know. Like, uh, previs, previs is barely understood by executives. Dude, it's barely. Rough. It is rough. Barely. Rough stuff. Well, uh, oh, I still have to get through this. Uh, 64 Nerd, thank you for the super chat. Taylor Harris with 50. Uh, that's the one that asked us to do Space Bar more, so we got to do more Space Bar. Yeah, okay. I guess we have to. Nick, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's talk offline, see if we can... Um, you know, do this more because uh, people, he can't, people, he can't. people are very I'm, I'm excited about our, uh, he can't do it. About Next, us we, arguing. We're willing to bring Mary into the negotiating table and figure out what she needs. All right, I'm out. I'm wait, out. Just <laughs> wait till Nick gets that sweet, sweet PayPal that pays for all those McDonald's dinners in a couple minutes. And we'll see how now, desperate he is. Occasion. It's on occasion. Okay. It's not, the, we're you're not send, doing anything. We're going to uh, send yeah, you a make, PayPal. You're making, that, a, you're making a radio play, but, uh, even though we'll supersizing doesn't exist anymore, you're going to go to McDonald's and you're going to show them the PayPal we gave you and they're going to say, let's supersize it. Let's break the rules. Listen, if y'all want to do more space bars, I'm down. All right. Sounds good. There okay. it is, folks. More uh, space bars coming you straight got, to you. You got your wish. Need a, All right. need a, and we should have another guest. We should have Dan Mills and Mike Lentz on. Yeah, dude. Uh, Cooper. Mills. Up Cooper, here, Cooper, too. Yeah, Cooper. We got to shout out Cooper. Yeah. Cooper. Mike Burns? Fuck. Yeah. 
Uh, Nita, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Alejandro Flores Rosales became a member. Sean Fox, or Foe. Uh, uh, Sean Foe said he managed to recover four old episodes of Space Bar. Oh, man, right. shit. There you go. Oh, shit. Uh, and then uh, Me- Meximan, thank you for the uh, super chat as well. Guys, uh, if you could leave our chat with some words of wisdom to go forth, here's the deal. Here's what I'll say. I I reset my clock about two weeks ago where I saw everything in the whole world slipping, including myself. I said, I said to myself, Hey, I'd like to get back to normal. And I, I caught myself slipping. And I said two weeks ago, it's, I'm going to pretend that it's starting over. And I've done a couple things that have been good things in comparison to the first half of what I consider the first half of the quarantine, which is I stopped smoking completely. No more jewel or anything. I'm drinking less. And I'm going on more walks, safe walks. Uh, Phil, Elliot, and Nick, even if they're jokes, what would you leave people with going forward for the month of June? How do you stay sane? How do you keep with it? What What's going on? Let's go with Phil first. Uh, so no joke. Like I just did it for a month. Um, quit drinking and just try. Like if you really want to try it, um, days like one, two, and three are tough. And it just, it slowly gets easier to the point where literally I was like, oh, like it was my choice to drink for this. And it's, it's silly. It's not like fucking 12 step or fucking whatever. It's just, it's, it, it changes your life. And I was like, oh, like you take pictures, you go, oh, I look better than this picture after a month. Have you lost weight? Well, about seven pounds. Damn. So like, <laughs> okay. it's, uh. it's, it's no joke. Like it, it changes the, at least for me, the chemistry in my body. Um, try it. Yeah. You try it. It again. It it starts off bad, and it just gets easier, and you're just like, cool. So I eat ice cream like four nights a week. Like I'm not saying you have to change okay. your diet, but like <laughs> enjoy your life. Well, I started doing a bunch of like non popular hikes. I went yesterday. I went to uh, uh, there's a bunch of like hiking trails in Burbank. Everyone goes to like Runyon and all this shit. I went to a trail mm, in, Runyon. in Burbank. No trees at all, so no one would go there. I I saw maybe one other couple. The entire time I was there, it was, was a great hike. It was wonderful. Hike. Yeah. Hike. yeah, it was just like yeah. up up in the top of those mountains, and uh, yeah. Phil, perfect. that's where we buried you for the not my president sketch. Oh yeah, yeah, was yeah. It, okay. Was it actually on the fire ro- the one of the fire roads that goes up there? Yeah, we did. We pulled over to the side and we put out a fake tombstone. Yeah, my that's body's right. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ricky, if you want a good a good hike with lots of trees uh in like studio city i think it's called like freeman canyon no no oh yeah i, I went canyon. i went there yesterday yeah, morning freeman. i went there yesterday morning because i thought it'd be less packed than like malibu or uh runyon literally you couldn't even park within a mile of that park oh of, of that's the, fucked up because like in in normal times that place no one was ever there that's funny yeah, yeah. no it's it's Boy. bad it's bad so i, I went to burbank because there's no trees because people don't yeah. like hiking in the direct sunlight and there was no one there <laughs> It was great. All right. And then the, the World War II planes flew over. I didn't even know right. that was happening. It was great. So we got Phil says uh try try giving up drinking. Right. It'll make you it'll make you a superhero. Uh, Nick, what about you? I would say appreciate the time you're gonna spend with your significant other, with your kids. There will be a time when you look back on this and miss quarantine. I know it's and I know it's tough right now, but there will be a time when you're like Wow, I really got I really got to connect with these people. And if if you're if you're home, if you're living by yourself, reach out to your friends from high school, reach out to your friends from college. Like I got to do some Zoom calls with my high school friends and it was it was just great to like reconnect and like rekindle that stuff. I mean, we're all we're all getting older and we're all looking for that kind of sense of kinship. So, yeah, and enjoy it enjoy it while it lasts because it's going to be back to business as usual, I think, sooner than we expect. Whether you want to do it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Elliot, uh, what's, what's, what's your tips for June? Uh, I mean, the only tips I have are just like, uh, ways to counteract the bad habits you've picked up during quarantine. But I would say most importantly, try to go to bed by like 11 or 12 each night. Don't, don't stay up super late. And like, uh, the ways I've been trying to do that are I, you know, I'll take a CBD gummy at like, 8 30 knowing <laughs> that it'll kick in fully like hour and a half later um but uh yeah like it's really easy to like fall into 
a terrible sleep schedule where you just constantly feel like shit like shit and like you're like you're not getting anything done and uh i yeah it, it or the it day feels, is bleeding to the next and it just becomes yeah, one it's, it's not existence. good you feel like shit um it's it's much better to try at least try to wake up by like seven or eight every day try to get a little bit of exercise in even if that's like a walk around the block like something basic just like get out of the house and or move your body before noon with enough time to spare you'll feel a lot better uh, if i can piggyback on that if you're on the fence about adopting a pet now might be the time and then that will draw you out of bed <laughs> yeah. there are a lot of dogs i'm just a lot saying. of a lot of dogs, they say they're not killing them, but I don't know <laughs> if I believe that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of dogs being put up for adoption. Obviously, like a lot of disclaimers on that. Like if you've never owned a dog, be very careful. But if you if you have owned dogs before and you know what you're doing um, and you want to my dogs or guns, like if you've owned oh, a gun <laughs> before. But I'm just, oh, yeah, for, like like for if if you're not sure about a dog, like talk to some people. Like now might be the time to so you can dedicate part of your life to a dog. Yeah, the first half uh, of the I keep saying the first half because I did make that like noticeable like shift in everything because I was eating like shit. I was drinking so much. I was like, guys, it was, it was bad. I'm sorry, but I do got to bounce. All right, all right, all right. Uh, oh. get, 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 ten, ten, I seconds. To... ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Sorry. I changed my sleep schedule. It changed a lot of things about in the, in a positive way. Uh, so everyone, we're still with you. Try to be as safe as possible. You're gonna live your own lives, but we're just trying to give you some advice on how yeah. to how to maintain safeness. Uh, thank you very much for uh, everyone joining us. Uh, go go Cheers. find us on Twitter, Internet Today TV on Twitter. We've linked Phil and Nick's uh, Twitter handles there. You can find Nick's new show. Phil joins us almost every week on Tech News Day, uh, and we will see you guys very soon for some more videos. Thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, we will see you soon. Bye bye. Listen to Space not like us. Bye return. everybody. What? Bottom drop, ass drop, the space bar.